Arena Football. Tonight's game is brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Buy your local Little Caesars, where you get two great pizzas for one low price. Buy Nintendo, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now you're playing with power. And by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, the taste adults have grown to love. They're great. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Providence Civic Center. Along with former Seattle Seahawks wide receiver Steve Rabel, I'm Roger Twybell. Very important game tonight for these two teams, battling for that final playoff spot. Steve, the Cobras got off to a dismal start, lost their first three, then won their next three. They've lost their last two, both of those, to the great drive. They've been a streaky team, and that probably goes hand-in-hand -hand with their quarterback, Matt Stevens, and that gives, of course, Coach Ray Wilsey some concern. Well, Ray Wilsey does not have gray hair for nothing. He's got a fine young quarterback in Matt Stevens, but as you say, as you see him there talking prior to the game, he is streaky. Ray's had some problems he's had to deal with on his offense. Uh, his receivers have been dropping passes. That's uncharacteristic for that group. They've gotten off to a slow start on the offensive front. They've also gotten off to a slow start as far as the games are concerned. Last week against Detroit, they dropped behind 23-0 before they could finally get things together. Kicking is becoming a crucial factor in this league, and the Los Angeles Cobras have acquired a young man named Marty Zendejas from a kicking family, if you will. Uh, a prolific scorer in college, averaged almost nine points a game. They just haven't given him any chances. I don't think Marty's going to help him too much in the kickoff category because he doesn't have the strongest leg you'll ever find, but he is accurate. Inside of about 35 yards, he may very well be a factor tonight. The New England Steamrollers acquired a kicker a couple of weeks ago. We're going to talk about him and about the Steamrollers' chances coming up tonight when we return with more of our pregame from the Providence Civic Center, the Cobras and the Steamrollers up next here on ESPN. Every day, Jack Taylor and Joe Donovan take the same road home. But today, they went a little out of their way. Give you a hand. You make America work. Here's to you, the clean, crisp taste of Beechwood-aged Budweiser. This bud's... For all the guys who go out of their way. This bud's for you. Yes, uh, I'd like two of those pizzas. Those pizzas? Uh, they'll be $17.99. $17.99? But it says $10.99. Well, not for those pizzas. How can that be? I think if you refer to the fine print. Fine print? It's not render vendor responsible. <laughs> May I help you? Uh, who are you? I'd like to introduce our corporate attorney. He's here on a regular basis. Oh, I'm not surprised. At Little Caesars, you always get two great pizzas for one low price. Pizza, pizza. Only at Little Caesars. Wacky seniors strike again. Golf legends try to drive defending champion Chichi Rodriguez off course at the South Classic. Sunday afternoon, live on ESPN. New Hampshire people. Some have roots that go back generations. Honey. Others are putting down roots here for the first time. But I think what we all have in common is the love for the lifestyle that makes New Hampshire special. There's a friendly, independent spirit here. And we capture that on WNHT. Because we don't just cover New Hampshire news. We live it. Cindy Williams, WNHT News 21. person, he grew up in Nashville. I've known him since I came to Bishop Girton High School. He is opening a store which is both exciting for him and exciting for the Nashville area. He gets us our baseball gloves, our cleats, our uniform, and our football. Mike has personalized service and all the top line of equipment. And he's got the best prices in town for uniforms, bats, balls, and all the other equipment we're going to need. He has the best of equipment. Come and visit him and say hello. New England offensively has not done much this year, but Steve Baparelli's got to be very pleased with his defense. Defense ranked number one in the Arena Football League this season. As you said, the offense may be struggling a little bit, but that defense is going to have to play well tonight against the vertical passing attack that Ray Wilsey brings from the Los Angeles Raider organization where he coached for so many years. There you see Babe Pirelli. He's got some problems on offense as well, but what he would like to do more than anything, I think, is run that ball with Cletus Jones, who did so well against New York last week, keeping the ball on the ground, 
force Los Angeles to come up and challenge the running game and then try to throw over top to Hockaday. Big inspiration for this team, the signing of Bernie Ruoff a couple of weeks ago. They barely lost that game, of course, you'll remember here on ESPN to Pittsburgh. Then they came back with a win last week, and he's going to be a big factor for them. What the guys on this team like about Ruoff is he has no excuses. If he misses a kick, he misses a kick. But he'll go out there and give them all he's got, and with 14 years' experience, this guy can teach the young fellas a lot. One guy we haven't talked about and uh, probably should is the second leading receiver in arena football out of the University of Georgia, Jim Hockaday. And when it becomes crunch time, the steamrollers usually go to this guy. They do indeed. He's the Steve Watson kind of receiver. The great pass route running, the good hands, not the great speed. But a lot of people overlook his defense as well. He makes a lot of tackles. And you notice in that tape, quarterback Harold Smith rolling out. That's what Ray Rilsey wants to stop tonight. He wants to keep Smith in the pocket force him up inside. Coming up next from Providence, the Los Angeles Cobras and the New England Steamrollers right here on ESPN. Power, power, power. Now, you are playing with power. Punch out by Nintendo. Power. 11 world-class contenders. Take them down with your controller, beat them all, and you've got a shot at Tyson's title. Power. But for that, you've got to beat Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out from Nintendo. Now you're playing with power. You've got this all wrong. You want to make news of the cereal today, you need a gimmick. Putting a whole banana inside a little bran biscuit. Stuff like that. These are just flakes. Mmm. I don't think I've tasted anything like it. Simple, light, it's really very good. Well, how about that? A cereal that doesn't need a gimmick. Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Corn Flakes? Taste them again for the first time. The upset of the week is brought to you by Pepto-Bismol. For most common stomach discomforts, the one that coats is the only one you need. Greg Norman has been a popular favorite in golf's major tournaments in past years, and this year was no different, entering the 88th U.S. Open. Following Thursday's first round, Norman was a few shots off the lead and still in contention. But on the ninth hole in Friday's second round, Norman's iron struck a hidden rock, jamming his wrist and forcing him to withdraw from the tournament. Our Pepto-Bismol upset of the week. Mom, where's my other Ed sock? Okay. Oh, it's just a little stomach thing. Mom! I'm late. I have to wear Ed socks. I look like a nerd. I knew it. You're sick. I forgot how bad diarrhea feels. Don't worry. All you need is this. Here it comes. The soothing relief of Pepto-Bismol. The one that coats is the only one you need. Feeling better? A-OK. -okay. Great. Now, if I could only find Susie's red sock. Did you look in the laundry? Marty Zendeja is set to kick it off for the Los Angeles Cobras as 27. Tony Slayton back deep for the New England Steamrollers. Zendejas, number two, one of the most prolific kickers in the history of college football. Uh, made nearly 88% of his field goal attempts and over 96% of his extra point attempts at the University of Nevada at Reno. And you can see he hits that low line drive and fumbled around and Slayton's going to finally fall on it. And there was a good example of a player really having no business coming up to the football. That was Friday and messing with it and consequently no return. Offensively for New England, Harold Smith's the quarterback, Cletus Jones the running back, Jeff Oliver the tight end, Jim Hockaday the wide receiver along with Alvin Williams and Tony Slayton, Donald Thompson's the center, and Kevin Murphy the offensive lineman. That's the set for Babe Pirelli as they take it first and ten from their five-yard line. That's where you set it up in arena football in this 50-yard field. Slayton's in motion and Smith immediately to Williams at the nine yard line where he makes the reception gain of about four yards defensively for Los Angeles Chuck Harris Brian Clark Dwayne Jackson Leppy Powell is the linebacker Matt McKnight had a couple of interceptions last week Derek Donald Gary Mullen and Wade Lockett that's the defense for the Los Angeles Cobras as they come into this game with a three and five record two consecutive losses to the Detroit Drive and New England coming off a victory last week that you saw here on ESPN against the New York Knights. Hockaday is the motion man this time around. And they'll give it to Cletus Jones, who's stuck immediately, and no problem there at all for Derek Donald. 
out of the University of North Carolina. Recent acquisition for Los Angeles and a great defensive player in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Derek Donald comes on board and takes the position of the defensive specialist on this Los Angeles Cobra team. Remember, folks, in arena football, you play both ways unless you're the quarterback or the kicker. Then you'd come out of the game. Derek Donald, the defensive specialist, comes in in place of the quarterback. And, of course, as uh, Roger said, fine defensive player at the University of North Carolina. Third down and three. And, Steve, this has been the problem for New England. Worst in the league in third down conversions at 20%. Excuse me, make that third and seven. Smith going deep, and that's going to be interference. Hockaday was the intended receiver, and the man over there was Wade Lockett defensively, and he obviously felt that Hockaday had him beat, so he just grabbed a hold of him. He had no choice at that point. He just said, this is liable to be a touchdown pass. I'm going to do the next best thing to knocking it down, and that's try to knock the receiver down. There was never any question. I don't think Wade Lockett had any question either. He knew that the, the official was back there and that he would see it. Sometimes that happens. As a wide receiver converted to defensive back to play in this league, you've got to be aware of all those things that you normally don't have to worry about. You can be on the sideline most of the time during a defensive set. And pass interference in arena football. Uh, the offensive team awarded a first down. And the ball just outside the 15-yard line. Ray Wilsey, the head coach for the Los Angeles Cobras, former assistant for many years with the Oakland and then Los Angeles Raiders, and they're going to run it to Cletus Jones again. And Jones is up to about the 19-yard line, third leading rusher in arena football. And uh, Ray Wilsey told us today that he felt that Babe Pirelli would go to Jones early. He'd see if he could make any yardage with him. If he did, then they'd probably see the run for the rest of the night. If it didn't work early, they'd probably just drop it. Again, and it's a test of this Los Angeles defense to come up and stop Cletus Jones. He's fire plug of a guy. I mean, all you have to do is look at the young man out of Florida State, six foot tall, and that's six foot standing in the high heeled shoes, 238 pounds, tough runner inside those tackles. Second down and six is Slayton is the man in motion, and that one just got away from Smith. The intended receiver was Williams. Mullen was over on the side, and a flag was immediately thrown as Williams really didn't have a chance to catch that football, and I think they're going to give a personal foul against Mullen. There was no reason for him to make any contact whatsoever there. Well, one of the things that Los Angeles wants to do to try to control the receivers of New England is get some leather on them, quite frankly. Push them around at the line of scrimmage, hit them. But remember, you can't do it inside five yards or outside five yards down the field. And the ball way overthrown. Gary Mullen now from his position. I don't know if he could see the ball was that far overthrown, but he did take a nasty shot into the receiver, knock him into the wall. I think that's just like a pitcher in baseball, maybe throwing one up and in early in the game, let you know he's there. Sure, a little chin music up there just to remind you that uh, you'll be talking to him more throughout the game. Clock runs continuously, first and ten now. As Slayton comes in motion, and they'll pitch it to the wing back who's inside the 20 to the 18-yard line, and we've not seen that particular running play from Babe Pirelli and the New England Steamrollers. There's only so many different ways you can work offensively in arena footballs. Pirelli calls the plays from the sideline. He gives Harold Smith the play right there. But that was a variation. We see that motion man so often, and that just gives the defense something else to think about. Something else to think about, right? Although I think Babe Pirelli, you know, the way they ran the ball last week, and pretty successfully with Cletus, he must be saying to himself during the week, let's try to change things up. Maybe we can pop something. Second down at seven. Slayton in motion. Jones way up on the line of scrimmage as he picks up Powell coming through. Hockaday gets the pass. Lockett has him. And finally, he's got to get a little help from McKnight. As Hockaday makes the reception, he'll be very close to the first down. And the key right there, I mentioned Jones up close to the line of scrimmage. Watch Powell come through and Jones pick him up. Weppy Powell, one of the better rushers for this Los Angeles team. Harold Smith doing a good job in just getting that ball off. Now watch Jim Hockaday fight for the extra yardage. Sometimes this is pretty dangerous. You stand up and expose your low back or a knee to having it ripped up. But this is the kind of player Jim Hockaday is. He's a big, tall, rangy kid who's very, very tough. Babe Pirelli says without question, this is the best player on his team. And he's in motion right now. First down and 10 from the 12. No way for Cletus Jones that time. As 26, Derek Donald comes up and stuffs him. And I'll tell you what, you'd love to see that play by your defensive back. And Donald, I'm sure, in college, loved to come up from his cornerback position and stuff that sweep. Remember, in arena football, you're talking about eight guys on eight guys. 
it's very, very difficult to get everybody blocked on a running play because whoever is accounting for the quarterback is free to roam. And that time, Derek Donald, the defensive specialist for Los Angeles, just stepping up, making the play. And for whatever it means, and statistics on the run in this league might be a little bit irrelevant, but Los Angeles has allowed the fewest yards coming into this game, 107 of any Arena Football League team. And Donald obviously plays the run awfully well, and they're going to try it again. And once again, it goes nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. Lockett 92 was there, and also coming up to put the hit on was Weppy Powell. And this is the problem with the running game. Uh, you, you go to it one too many times, and see Weppy Powell slid inside that gap there. Now somebody's got to pick him up. One of the things that Ray or that uh, Bay Perilli is hoping to do here tonight is maybe pull a lineman once in a while and actually lead that play around. But when you pull somebody out of that offensive front, you leave a big gap for a guy like Weppy Powell to run through. Now they're faced with a third and 13. A moment ago, it was first and 10 from the 12. Situation entirely different. All the receivers to the right side, Alvin Williams, the motion man, cuts back in. Smith looking for him. He's got him. He underthrows him. And McKnight had it right in his hands. And he drops the ball. McKnight, who had two interceptions last week against Detroit, had another opportunity there. This is the problem that New England's been facing all year. They cannot seem to make an interception. With the top defense in the league, they've only got two. Here, McKnight in great position. I've got to think he's believing the play's going to go the other way. But now New England will keep control because of a penalty. This is the third penalty. Third penalty against the Los Angeles Cobras. And we didn't get what the call was up here. We're told it was a zone violation on Matt McKnight, number 93, out of Cal State Fresno. So the New England offense has sputtered a bit here, but they've gotten some help from the Los Angeles defense. As it's first and goal from just inside the 10. Jones, the intended receiver, Powell, was the man rushing and got a piece of Harold Smith who was thrown just behind him a little bit. And those stocky running backs have a hard time turning around, not like you spindly wide receivers. Spindly, I like that term. Skinny would have been another term, but spindly was fine. This, again, one of the problems in arena football that you face as a coach, if you decide to take that fullback and run him into the flat, you leave your quarterback wide open to being hit by the all-rushing linebacker because there's simply nobody left to block him. You can only do so many things with eight players on, this, on each team. That time, uh, Jones was out there, but Weppy Powell was also in the backfield. Second down and goal, and a flag, and that was before the play. I think that was Off number sides four. against the defense. Four. He can't, he's getting real close, Captain. Linebacker encroachment, 40 defense. Linebacker encroachment. So what they're saying is that Weppy Powell, there's a space there. It's called the tackle zone. Is that what Tackle we, box. Tackle box, and Weppy was not lined up inside of that. Right. He can't, he cannot step inside the kind of the rear legs or the rear ends of his defensive lineman in front of him. That would be an illegal alignment or linebacker huh? encroachment as the call was made by the official yeah. so the fourth penalty on this opening drive clock running 657 is all that's left in this first quarter and new england who's had trouble scoring points they've scored the fewest of any team in arena football on an average try to crack it in here hockaday the intended receiver lockett the man defending one of the reasons that Babe really obviously wanted to run the ball tonight because he was successful last week and he wants to test this Los Angeles team. But another reason is his quarterback, Harold Smith. When Harold starts out hot, he plays hot. But if he doesn't get going, he has some problems, can be erratic. Remember a couple of weeks ago we were here, he tried to throw a ball away, throwing it into the net. Pittsburgh linebacker ran it back 50 yards for a touchdown and Pittsburgh won the game. Third down and goal, and as we mentioned earlier, the worst in arena football on third down efficiency, but this is four down territory here. Williams is the man in motion. Smith has got Hockaday touchdown. Well, when in doubt, you know who to look for. And for big Jim Hockaday, his 12th touchdown reception of the year. You look to a guy like Hockaday, Roger, because he runs such fine one-on-one -on -one routes. And look at the separation he gets from Wade Lockett in just that small space of the end zone. The end zone in arena football is only eight yards deep, and he was able to get five-yard separation because he ran such a fine pass route. Bernie Ruoff in to attempt the point after. 
The end zone eight yards deep. Smith the hold and Ruoff's kick is good. And New England steamrollers have jumped out to a quick 7-0 lead over the Los Angeles Cobras with 5.26 at first possession used up nearly 10 minutes. Round of lights here. If you want the one light that outshines them all, ask for Bud Light. Let me know when you're ready for another round. First, Gillette made shaving closer, then made it smoother. With Atra Plus, its Luber Smooth Strip glides the razor over your face for Gillette's smoothest shave. The Atra Plus system, first we made it closer, then we made it smoother. Roger Twibel and Steve Rabel back with you at the Providence Civic Center. And I'll tell you what, Steve, when that clock runs continuously, you can eat up a lot of time with a few penalties. And again, one of the problems that Los Angeles has had, getting off to a slow start ball, rushes against the roof of the arena here in Providence. The kickoff hit the steel girder above the field here. And Joe Kelly brought it in and then took it about five yards and they just simply play it. Uh, Providence has one of the lowest ceilings, the scoreboard, the girders here. We've seen it happen in Providence before. And there's an example of them. Basically what they do is they just say play on. And Los Angeles will do that. They'll have it first and 10 from the 15. Matt Stevens is their quarterback out of UCLA. He has been the top rated quarterback for most of the year, even though he's had a couple of off weeks, if you will. Actually, they played a couple of games in a nine day span. Stevens with all the receivers put to the far side. The sack back at the two yard line. 54 is in there. That's Kevin Murphy. And this has been a problem that Ray Wilsey talked about. He said, not so much that they've sacked us that much, but they've really harassed Stevens a lot. But that time, the sack, Weppy Powell's the running back, Dwayne Jackson, the tight end, Mullen, McKnight, Lockett, the wide receivers, Clark and Harris, the offensive lineman for Ray Wilsey and the Los Angeles Cobras on a second now and 20 as they set it down at the five yard line. Second leading team for sacks. The uh, New England Steamrollers do a good job of getting to the quarterback. Grant, the intended receiver that time. 45 Alvin Williams, the man who's uh, got the distinction of covering this veteran. Job that I certainly wouldn't want, and I don't think many of these New England uh, Steamrollers would want either. Cliff Branch coming back after a number of weeks on the injured list and has Matt Stevens throwing to him, the number one quarterback in arena football. But as we talked about earlier, can be erratic. When he gets off to a good start, he can be pretty good as well. Not a very big quarterback. Short, and that should lead to some interesting matchups. We'll talk about those in just a couple minutes. Third down and 20. Stevens airing it out, going deep to Branch. He comes back, makes the catch. Inside the five to the four, Hockaday with the tackle. And there was an NFL veteran showing a pretty good young player how it's done. A penalty marker down back at the one-yard line. And it's unfortunate because this play is going to go against Los Angeles. Unfortunate that is for Cliff Branch, who, as we said, has been out of action with a severe groin pull over the last six or seven weeks, but has continued to work with the young receivers on this team. That time, as you said, showed him something. How to go up for a football doesn't count. Third down. And the move will be back now three yards, and it will be set down at the two. So third down and 23, so nullify that. And penalties have haunted the Cobras here in the open quarter, and we're down to the three-minute mark. As now the officials stop the clock, and they'll confer. You know, the sack by Murphy, uh, he's only made nine tackles this year, and he's had five and a half sacks. So when he gets to you, it's going to count for a lot. It's also lost to Dale. The down will be four. Four so down. It's a loss of down on that play. And Zenteos now will come in. Matt Stevens having a few words with the officials. And Zen go ahead, I was going to say, this could not be a worse situation for Zendeos, as a matter of fact. Backed up all the way against his own screen, if you will, the back of his own end zone, and not with the strongest leg in the world. Well, basically, all he's going to try to do here is Ray Wilsey told us this morning, pick out one of the advertisements on the boards on the sideline and basically aim for that. 
as he does really not have the leg to kick it this far. His distance is from 40 yards and in. They've got two seconds left. And Slayton takes it at the five. And Slayton is brought down at the 20-yard line. Joe Kelly, the first man to hit him, and then coming down to help was Michael Jones, the man who was called for holding. So, just 2.23 to go first quarter. New England has good field position at their own 20. So, what's a little dandruff? Okay. Imagine you're at the social event of the year, and your dream girl says, hello, just as you do this. Her first impression? What a hunk. There are only a few flakes. Give me a break. The breaks are, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. So? So regular shampoos won't fix your problem. Try this. Head and shoulders? Well, you don't have dandruff. Bingo. Head and shoulders. Because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Monday, a special night on the ESPN. Australia's Southern Cross was no match for the 1974 America's Cup defenders. Courageous took the lead and never looked back in the race for the grandest prize. Next, can Mike Tyson join the ranks of the greatest heavyweight boxers, relive history, and see if he has what it takes to become a legend? Then, the world's two superpowers go head-to-head -head when top USA and USSR men's volleyball teams compete. All Monday on ESPN. Roger Twibel, Steve Rabel back with you. The Providence Civic Center, these two teams, New England and Los Angeles, battling for the fourth and final playoff spot. Uh, there's also tiebreakers, Steve, because of the way the uh, format is set forth, and Los Angeles is ahead on points right now, so even if uh, New England would win tonight uh, and even up with Los Angeles for that fourth spot, tiebreakers are used. Of course, Chicago leading the here right now unbeaten at 9-0. Next week, we'll be out in Los Angeles to see the Cobras take on the New York Knights as Alvin Williams goes to Motion Smith. Plenty of time. Williams, touchdown. Fifth touchdown reception of the year by Alvin Williams. Gary Mullen, number one in the white jersey in the middle of your screen, did not know where the ball was, and only one foot has to be in bounds for Alvin Williams on the long touchdown reception from Harold Smith. Take a look at it from the reverse angle this time. 25 yards on the catch. That's just a fly pattern, Steve. Just go. Just right down the middle of the field. There's one foot in. That's all you need in arena football. So maybe that little pop by Mullen on Williams earlier on the sideline. It's a little payback right there. And when you get to payback by scoring points, that's even better. New England and a couple of Harold Smith touchdown passes and they lead Los Angeles 14 to nothing. Introducing Coda Color Gold 100. I see your true colors shining Coda Color Gold 100 gives you the most accurate colors, the truest colors of any print film. Don't be afraid to listen, show. A new Coda Color Gold. Harold Smith with a couple of touchdown passes in the first quarter. And New England, the Rollers, lead the Cobras 14 to nothing. Ray Wilsey was telling us earlier today, he says, you know, I don't want to make excuses, but we're the only team west of Chicago, and we're a long way west of Chicago. He says, the travel he thinks has started to catch up with his team as Ruoff hits it off the net. Mullen will take it. Good kickoff return man here. But he is stuck right at the 15-yard line, and that was Sylvester Bembry. You know what's nice about a short field is you can get a guy like Sylvester Bembry, who's 6'3", about 260, 265, to get downfield and make a play like that on a kickoff. Guaranteed, Gary Mullen's going to remember that kickoff return for a while. Those big fellas like Bembry don't usually play on the special team. You, know, because you guys who were linemen, you, you don't get down the kicks. field in a hurry. And we poor spindly wide receivers had to do that. That's right, you're supposed to be tough. <laughs> Less than a minute to go, first quarter. McKnight's in motion. And a flag thrown immediately, and that is all that's happened to Los Angeles so far in this game. And now a procedure call. Six penalties already in the first quarter against Los Angeles, and not one against New England. 
And it's difficult for the coaches. Ray Wilsey can just stand on the sidelines and look. Los Angeles. But when you're a tired team, Steve, you usually make a lot of mistakes like this. Penalties. 85% of the time are mental mistakes. The lining up offsides, the lining up in the zone, if you will, the uh, illegal procedure calls. Those kinds of things are mental mistakes, and that's what happens when you get tired. Stevens going to lock it. And he's out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Alvin Williams makes the tackle. And we'll remember his name later on, making a touchdown catch, making a tackle as the clock continues to run here in the first quarter. We'll stop in the final minute of the first half on out of bounds and incomplete passes. And LA will not get another playoff here as we'll end the first quarter of play with the New England Steamrollers leading the Los Angeles Cobras 14 to nothing. And that's, I would venture to guess, as good a quarter of football as New England's played all year. Got to make Babe Perilli happy. And we'll be back to Providence right after this. You've got this all wrong. You want to make news of the cereal today, you need a gimmick. Putting a whole banana inside a little bran biscuit, stuff like that. These are just flakes. Mmm. I don't think I've tasted anything like it. Simple, light, it's really very good. Well, how about that? A cereal that doesn't need a gimmick. Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Corn Flakes? Taste them again for the first time. Gillette has changed the face of shaving. First, we made it closer. Then, we made it smoother. After a plus, its Lubra Smooth Strip actually releases lubricants to glide the razor more smoothly. Incredible smoothness from the first stroke to the last. The Atra Plus system. First, we made it closer. Then, we made it smoother. Witness incredible height and amazing stunts when the world's hottest skaters gather for the Rock and Roll Jam Skateboard Championship, Sunday night on ESPN. My old car let me down, I went to Nashua, and this is what I Through July 2nd, get $1,000 cash back when you buy a sporty Mazda RX-7. Pay bills, save it, or just play. $500 back on all Mazda trucks, too. All at Gateway Motor Company, Nashua, New Hampshire. Remember the Kahala Restaurant, Amherst Street, Nashua, when you want the best in Chinese, Polynesian, Szechuan, and American dishes. All our meals are prepared with quality ingredients and expert hands. Take advantage of the Kahala Luncheon Buffet, Monday through Friday, 11.45 till 2 p.m., for only $4.99. Tuesday through Sunday, relax and enjoy live entertainment in Kahala's Paradise Lounge. Kahala's also offers you complete takeout service. Kahala Restaurant, Amherst Street, Nashua. Roger Twibel, Steve Rabel back with you in Providence, and why not? Hockaday, 12 times this year, has caught touchdown passes, and already tonight, a 7-yard pass from Harold Smith. Uh, Smith also with a 30-yard touchdown pass to Alvin Williams, and a good two-way player as... Uh, Babe was telling us this morning, moving cornerback this week. Right, going to come up, make a play. Tall, rangy kid, as we've talked about. He can also, also come up and make the tackle. Second down. Stevens going to lock it. And a penalty marker. And it's going to be on Slayton. Tony Slayton looking for a high five, thinking he made a great play. I got a feeling he's going to get called for pass interference here. Falling on the back of Wade Lockett's legs. Yeah, it's going to be on Slayton. The ball was thrown, Steve, to the middle of the field, and Lockett was trying to come into it, and Slayton just wouldn't let him. Slayton's a pretty good defensive player, too, and that's why he's back there. He's been injured part of the season. Babe likes to have him back in the game. Take a look now. The middle of your screen coming into the picture will be Lockett, number 22. There's number 27, kind of pushing him all the way down the field, then finally falling down on the back of him as a receiver. Of course, no question in my mind. <laughs> Absolutely. Interfering. Basically, all L.A. has to do is just stop making the penalties right now. They, they've got to try to get something going. They just had one possession there in the uh, first quarter. They've got a first down now after that penalty. First and ten. Mullins in motion. Stevens. McKnight. Got it. Touchdown. Well, they're not going to call it a touchdown. He fell right on the goal line. 
I think that's what Matt's arguing about. I think he's saying, hey, I should have been in there. You should have called that a touchdown. Instead, it's on about the one-inch line. But Matt McKnight reacts very well to a dying quail of a pass, and I'll bet anything that that was tipped at the line of scrimmage where perhaps Steven's arm was hit. I mean, he crossed the goal line. From that he shot, was, he did. The only thing the official could be watching was that perhaps his knee hit the ground just this side of well, the end zone. His knee did hit the ground about the two-yard line yeah. as Weppy Powell will take it in for the touchdown. So, so one thing that Los Angeles did, they had to there, oh, there they go. a long time to call that. <laughs> He's four yards in the end zone, but you want to be sure. You want to be sure. Ray Wilsey did just what he should have done. Not panic. Let his team do what they've been doing all year, and that is getting that ball deep downfield and somebody coming up with a big catch. So after the big pass play from Stevens to McKnight, Weppy Powell out of San Jose State uh, takes it in. His third rushing touchdown of the year. And rushing is not a strong suit for the Los Angeles Cobras. As Zendejas, Marty Zendejas, one of the Zendejas kicking family, misses the extra point and uh, there's a marker down all fairness the snap was rather high michael mendoza did a good job of getting it down the penalty is declined. So the, the penalty was against good. Los Angeles anyway. And let's remember, too, that Mendoza, a new holder for Zendejas. Beavers, his teammate, had been the holder. That may be a problem before the night's over as well. May I point out our special offer? Two pizzas for the price of one. Oh, thank you very much. Excuse me, your shoelace is untied. Oh. Yes, I'd like that two-for-one offer. I'm sorry, that offer has expired. But I just bent over to tie my shoelaces. He did. He bent over. There's nothing I can do. Show him your shoelaces. Some pizza places have temporary two-for-one offers. At Little Caesars, you always get... Pizza, pizza. Two great pizzas for one low price. You know what really burns me up? My feet. Athlete's foot kept flaring up. I get rid of it for a while, but it just flare up again. Finally went to the doctor. He told me to get Tenactin. It's what doctors and pharmacists recommend most. Tenactin even cures recurring athlete's foot. Use it regularly like they tell you. It'll keep the fly from coming back. Fast Actin Tenactin puts athlete's foot out for good. New England 14, Los Angeles 6 is the Cobras score on their first possession of the second quarter. 13.06 left to go on the half is Tony Slayton out of Texas A&M. Oh, what an athlete in high school he was, too. A real blue-chip prospect. Williams takes it at the goal line. And out to the 19-yard line. Lockett makes the tackle as Alvin Williams has done a little bit of everything tonight. He's got a touchdown pass. He returns a kickoff. He's made a couple of tackles defensively. Of course, as Ray Ball always likes to know, former track man. I'd like to throw that in there. Yeah, you got like a track man. The guy's a great all-around athlete, and there weren't many of us able to do that. Alvin Williams, two catches, 34 yards on the night, and a touchdown on the evening, and as you've said, a couple of tackles as well. Smith has usually gotten off to a very, very slow start tonight. Four of six for 48 yards and a couple of touchdowns. And the ball underthrown to Williams that time. Mullen was back there defensively. As you take a look at Alvin Williams, Texas Southern. Oh, Derek Donald, Los Angeles has come up with some new players. Derek Donald uh, for the Los Angeles Cobras. We've mentioned his name already a couple of times tonight. Uh, tremendous defensive player. A couple of occasions, Atlantic Coast Conference Player of the Week. One game, 13 tackles against the University of Florida as the wave starts to move here. But there are those players in this league those impact players. We'll talk a little bit more about it as Smith is dumped and there's a penalty marker down. The man who got in there for the Los Angeles Cobras, Dwayne Jackson, 84, holding is going to be the call and I got to believe the guilty guy was 67, Donald Thompson, the center out of Shepherds College. Let's take a look at it. Watch the left side of your screen right there. Weppy Powell is literally grabbed and thrown aside by, as you said, number 67, Donald Thompson, who has just moved into the starting center position. He was just picked up. There's the Decline. call, 67, Donald Thompson. 
getting back to that, there are several players in this league, Steve, that cause coaches of other teams concern. And from what we've seen of Donald, uh, he's going to be a very active player who might cause a lot of coaches some concern in this league because there are some very, very good individuals who really stand up heads and tails above some others. Well, and you'd figure a guy like Derek Donald would obviously draw the top receiver on the other team. So in a lot of cases tonight, he'll be looking at Hockaday. Third down and 19. And they're going to Hockaday. Donald is there, and he breaks it up. A fine defensive play by Derek Donald. Step for step that time. He lines up in the free safety spot, does Derek Donald. Actually, he took the position as the defensive specialist of a young man named Ed Zeman, who was a pretty good football player himself. Derek Donald running downfield stride for stride with Jim Hockaday. And keep your eye on Hockaday, who will be in the orange jersey, number 85, and see if this ball wasn't catchable. Oh, that ball was just right on the money, and maybe from another angle, we might see that he should have made that catch. But Derek Donald was there on the play, as he should have been. Ruoff now will attempt a field goal. Smith will put it down at the two-yard line. So 48 and 8, 56-yard attempt for Bernie Ruoff. That's got distance, but it's wide off the net, and Mullen will take it. Boy, Mullen had some room, and he spins away. Tries to cut it back upside the middle, where number 44 for the steamrollers is right there, Cletus Jones, to make the tackle. So Derek Donald and the Cobras come up with a defensive stop, and they'll have it when we return to Providence. Fans, please. Mr. Garfield, welcome to Embassy Suites Hotel. My room. Here you get a suite for about the price of a room at most Marriott's or Hyatt's. Beautiful. Don't change a thing. The living room, sir. Love what you've done with this room. The bedroom. This is great. I need my space. And of course you'll want to take advantage of Embassy Suites' free breakfast. Food. Served every morning. At Embassy Suites, you don't have to be a fat cat to enjoy the sweet life. I resemble that remark. You'll flip over USAC Midgets and Sprints. These powerful race cars make for an exciting challenge. Good things come in small packages. USAC Racing, Thursday night, live on ESPN. Ten forty-two to go first half. New England leads at 14-6 as Los Angeles will take over offensively. Ball going to be at the 13-yard line as Matt Stevens at Looking down at that wrist an awful lot, uh, Steve. <laughs> and he's not checking the time. He's checking the plays written down there. Joe Kelly, new papa, the motion man. Stevens sends it high, sends it deep, and the catch and dropped. Well, folks, even when you've been around a bit, when you've been a National Football League player for 15 years with the Raiders, both in Oakland and Los Angeles, I even the great Cliff Branch doesn't come up with a spectacular one all the time. You know, I, I, I started to say Cliff Branch, I'd say, but, but Cliff Branch is going to make that catch every time. I wanted to make sure the number. This was the reason Ray Wilsey wanted him back in the game, to make these kind of big catches. Come on, Cliff, falling back away from the ball. Cliff Branch, first person to admit he should have made the grab. They'll try it again. This time they go to Kelly. And Joe Kelly gets the first down. Kelly out of Vanderbilt, right to midfield at the 25-yard line, where he's brought down by Alvin Williams, Slayton, and Rafferty, who's checked into the game. Rafferty's 28. He's in at a defensive back slot. Branch is number 22, as you take a look at Kelly, number 20, Branch, 22. And we might also say that as Branch was laying on his back, it looked like Slayton kind of ran by and stuck a hand in and possibly knocked the ball away. But you just assume a guy like Branch is going to make that catch. He had his man beaten by about five yards and had to come back for that ball. But nonetheless, they've got it first and ten now. Stevens going to Branch. Touchdown! Larry Friday was the man trying to cover Branch that time. Now, Larry Friday's a big kid. He's 6'5", 220 pounds. There's no contest here. Watch Cliff Branch just come down the little outside dip. It's over. You've got to get on your horse to cover him, and he's just going to run away from most everybody. Just his second touchdown catch of the season, 25 yards from Matt Stevens. So you're taking a look at the leading passer in arena football, Matt Stevens, and a, a legend. And even if Cliff Branch can't play defense, which pretty much everybody knows, he's not going to be a defensive standout on this team. 
he is going to help this team by making those kind of catches. Zendejas, the point after, and he missed it. So Zendejas has just barely missed two, and he's working with a new holder this week, Eric Beavers, the backup quarterback who caught, who held for him all through college at Nevada, Reno, uh, has been put on the taxi squad this week as Cliff Branch receiving the congratulations from his teammates, and L.A. trails by two. summertime in New England. Hi, everybody's at the beach, and uh, a few people break away to come in and watch an arena football game. We're at the Civic Center in Providence, Rhode Island. Along with Steve Rabel, I'm Roger Twibo, and uh, New England dominated the first quarter. Los Angeles has come back to do the same in the second quarter. 8.09 left to go, and we talked about the kickers at the top. Ruoff, two for two so far. Zendejas, 0 for two. As Slayton goes back to receive the kick. And we're watching the two best kickers in the Arena Football League right now, both of them kicking at 30% or better, which in this game with those narrow uprights is difficult. And Slayton will take it about five yards deep. Got a seam, fumbles the football. And it's recovered by Los Angeles. It's recovered by Los Angeles, and the man down at the bottom was Richard Rogers, number 25. And Steve, so often when you get that seam, you get a little careless. That ball just popped right out of there. A player came by him from the back side, but missed him completely, it looked like, from our replay there. And the ball just popped out. Richard Rogers, a defensive standout in his years at Cal, was able to get there and make that play. And that ball looked like it was on the ground forever. Those players who are lying on the ground, fighting, crawling, scratching, trying to get there and get it, think that ball must be on the ground two, three minutes. But about a second later, there's Richard Rogers diving on top. And not only does New England fumble the most, but Los Angeles creates the most fumbles. They've created 21 now as Weppy Powell takes the swing pass. Ooh, and into those boards on the far side as Powell picks up about six yards. But just as important as that statistic about fumbles, and New England has had a lot of them this year, Los Angeles creating a lot. And uh, as I said, he had a seam, he had some running room, and sometimes you just get a little bit careless with the football. Sometimes it scares you to death when you look up there and you see that big wide open space in front of you. You think, if I don't get there soon, I'm liable to get clobbered. And the officials calling a timeout. So New England making a defensive substitution, and they're going to take a, a timeout as Brian Allen, number 30, was uh, checking into the game. So we've got 6.57 left to go in the first half. And Ray Wilsey talking it over with Matt Stevens. Los Angeles in good shape for their third scoring chance of the second quarter. Were you surprised? Surprised to turn 40? No. I meant the party. The pizza. The heartburn. Mm-hmm. You know what they say about anchovies at your age. Anchovies don't get to be my age. Do we have any Pepto? Mm-hmm. Here comes the soothing relief of Pepto-Bismol. The one that coats is the only one you need. Feeling better? Like a kid again. Roger Twibell, Steve Rabel back with you in Providence. 6.57 left to go as we start to wind down the end of this uh, arena football season. We've got about three weeks regular season left, Steve, and then the playoffs. And uh, so the jockeying for position right now in these two teams, Los Angeles and New England, a crucial game because four teams make the playoffs. You've got to figure New York at 1-8 and eight is out of it. And these two teams battling for that fourth and final spot. Los Angeles has got a couple of home games left. After this one, New England is on the road against Chicago, Pittsburgh, and Detroit. So it's tough going as Branch is split to the far side. Stevens comes near side to Rogers. And he is knocked out of bounds at about the six-yard line. Richard Rogers makes the reception from the University of California at Berkeley, where Ray Wilsey was head coach and athletic director for a number of years back in the 60s and 70s. 
Because Ray, of course, after that, going with the Raiders and on his staff. And congratulations, we might as well say that, to uh, Bob Meshack, who has joined that team as a full-time assistant coach. Bob also, along with Lou Erber and Ray Wilsey, coaching on that Raiders staff and bringing up some great winning tradition from their years with the Raiders. First down and goal from just inside the five. Kelly is in motion. Stevens going far side to Kelly. Touchdown. Boy, nice route right there by Joe Kelly, the new proud papa out of Vanderbilt. And so often, Steve, you're seeing that motion man ending up being a factor in the play, not just as a deceptive ploy, but coming back and making the play as Kelly did right there. And for Joe Kelly, his seventh touchdown reception of the year, as Dejas 0 for 2 on the extra points. This is another one. So Zendejas now is 0 for 3. This is really going to be tough on this Los Angeles team, the fact that Zendejas can't make the shot. However, with catches like this by Joe Kelly, look at him reach those, look at him reach those hands out there and slide down. Make sure he gets a foot in bounds and makes the grab. Mullen given Zendejas a little pat on the back. So don't worry about it, pal. Maybe we'll score enough that it's not going to matter. But so far, three extra point attempts missed. 18 to 14. The score as New England scored all the points in the first quarter. Los Angeles has scored all the points so far in the second quarter. And we've got 534 left to go. Ray Wilsey on the side. Ray and his team showing up. A lot of poise getting behind there. Obviously, coming into Ray's mind had to be last week when they dropped behind 23 zip to Detroit and were able, were unable to really generate anything after that. Team doing a good job getting their offense back together and getting on the score. Brian Gardner takes the kickoff. And he's up across the 15 to the 18 yard line. McKnight, 93, who always seems to be around the play. One of the men in on the tackle. Harold Smith coming back onto the field. Wanted us to say hi to all his family and friends down in Houston. Los Angeles 3-5, and five, New England 2-6. and six. Four teams make the playoffs, and you've got to figure Chicago, Detroit, and Pittsburgh. Looking pretty good right now, although Pittsburgh uh, losing a tough one last night to Chicago in waiting moments, and offside against the Los Angeles Cobras, 65 Michael Jones from SUNY Brockport at State University, New York. Brockport. Small school for a big kid. Great athlete. Now the penalty flags fly that time against New England. Defensive left in. Oh, down, check that. Seven yards. Against Los Angeles, so the penalties continue against the Cubs. Again, a problem for them all evening. Game started out that way. They have yet to correct that. Less than five minutes to go now, and the clock running. Wilsey having a few words as you took a look at the penalties. He's saying six, I believe he was yelling 68's ineligible. That's Sylvester Bembry, who's lined up on the far side on the offensive line. Smith, he just throwing it up for grabs and out of bounds. Williams, the intended receiver, and Derek Donald, who's proving to be a factor here tonight. One thing Derek Donald did deep downfield after Harold Smith threw that pass. Harold, who started out pretty hot in the game, four of nine, 48 yards and a couple of touchdown passes. One thing Derek Donald did was lose track of the ball. So Derek, number 26 in the orange jersey, or number 26 in the uh, white jersey, I'll get the color right, trying to keep his eye on the receiver as best he could, but lost the ball completely. Very, very difficult for a defensive back who doesn't see the ball to keep track of things. Second and seven. Smith has a lot of time going to Hockaday. Lockett tips it and keeps it away. And what a great athletic play right there by number 92, Wade Lockett out of Cal State Fullerton. Lockett only gives up a couple of inches to Hockaday there at 6'2". A couple of guys who are very, very similar. Both can jump. Both have pretty fair speed. This time, Lockett knew where the ball was, wasn't about to give up a pass interference call and trying to knock this thing down. Looked like a jump ball at uh, half court for a basketball game. And some better pass defense tonight by Los Angeles as they've allowed the second most passing yards this year. And I think Donald has been a key player in that so far. And a good play there by Wade Lockett. As we have a third and seven now, Williams splits to the near side. And 
Smith eludes one tackle and intercepted by Derek Donald. Donald still moving. And finally tackled just across midfield at the 25-yard line. Sylvester Bembry makes the tackle. But Derek Donald, who had 12 interceptions in his career at North Carolina in six in one season. Look at this, Steve. Watch him dive right in front and make the interception in front of Williams. Now he has the presence of mind to get up. Nice block by Gary Mullen. Just jump on him, Gary. Give him a break. Derek Donald jumps up, able to find a seam, get up field. Legs got a little tired there after a few plays on offense and defense. But nonetheless, Derek Donald doing a great job looking fine on defense for Los Angeles. L.A. has good field position. First and ten. Call it the 24-yard line. Mullen now in motion from the near side. Stevens moves up. Got Mullen. And he's out of bounds at the 11. Larry Friday moved up to make the tackle. So Gary Mullen, the third leading receiver. He's from West Virginia University. Gets enough for the first down. Stevens, good protection, and then he moves up into the pocket with the outside rush. And Mullen juggled it for just a moment. And you see, stepped out of bounds right there as Friday came up to make the stop. Clock running now, just over two minutes to go. Mullen has been a prolific receiver so far this year. He's fourth in scoring with 78 yards coming into this game. As first and 10 now. <laughs> Stevens throws it out to Muller. Good block, and he's in for the touchdown. Tony Palomera from Cal State Northridge got the kickout block, and Mullen takes it in. And what a turnaround from the first quarter. Take a look at it again. Just a quick out, two-step, a little play action. Mullen wide open. Now watch Palomera, number 80, gets outside and gets the block on Alvin Williams. And Mullen then slips in there and that gives Marty Zendejas another opportunity he's 0 for 3 that one's good so Zendejas with his first extra point and what a big second quarter for the Los Angeles Cobras they've scored 25 points and they lead the New England Steamrollers 25 to 14 so after having a hard time getting on track, they've really come alive. Once again, little play action to Weppy Powell, and just a quick out to Mullen. Williams was about five yards off of him, and while Williams is concentrating on Mullen, Palomera gets a piece of him and frees him to get into the end zone. And for Gary Mullen, his 14th touchdown reception so far this year, and good block by Palomera to get outside. On the reverse angle, you saw a perfect example of it there, and. Mullen puts it down, slaps the ball, and says we're in business. And that they are, 25-14. So New England scored all the points in the first quarter. And Los Angeles has scored all of the points so far in the second quarter. As Zendejas will kick it off. Not a strong leg. And now that hits a netting, which hangs down to protect the scoreboard. And what they try Eddie. to do now is Eddie. the official is looking up. Here you go. They try to gauge where it hit up above, and they're they'll mark it at that spot on the field. Uh, it's, it's not a perfect world, folks, and obviously it doesn't seem real fair, but uh, that's the deal. And so New England with good field position at the 20, but the clock now has ticked down to the one-minute mark, and that means that the clock will now be stopping. That lets us know that it'll stop on out-of-bounds and incomplete passes. And Harold Smith who had a tremendous first quarter, but unfortunately the Los Angeles defense has risen to the occasion here in the second quarter, and obviously New England has not been able to do much, but a minute to go, clock will stop on out of bounds and incomplete passes. They've got two of their three timeouts remaining as Gardner is the motion man, number nine, and Smith had to get rid of it in a hurry because Ruffy Powell was right in his face. Weppy Powell, number 40, San Jose State. We understand that in Los Angeles, and we'll probably see it when we're out there next week for the game between the Cobras and the Knights, that his uh, family, uh, a rather large family, come to the games, and his mother's been known to, to get out and do a dance or two at halftime. 
on the field. So maybe we'll get that attraction next week at the Sports Arena in L.A. On second and ten, Smith going near side. Gardner right into the boards. And the clock will stop on the out-of-bounds as Gardner gets across midfield to the 23-yard line. As Steve Rabel is headed downstairs, is down in the corner. We'll be talking with Cliff Branch at halftime. And Steve, what, what's been the problem the second quarter with the uh, steamrollers? Well, Roger, I don't know if the team has just gotten a, a little bit conservative or not. I don't think that's the case. I think Los Angeles has actually come out of its shell a bit and learned that they can, in fact, compete with this team down here, even though they had some problems early on. They've overcome the penalties. They've done the job. They're putting more pressure on the quarterback right now, and I think that's a big key for L.A. Alvin Williams was in motion, third down and four. Gardner makes the catch, and what a tremendous tackle right there. Another great defensive play by the Los Angeles Cobras at the bottom of the pile. That is the guy we've been talking about, Steve, Derek Donald. Derek Donald doing a fine job again. Defensive back, sure tackler. The young man is able to get in there and make that play. Good defensive backs know where those sticks are, Roger. And again, having been a receiver, I know what the defensive backs tend to think a lot of times. They know where the sticks are. They know how to find, be sure that they can stop that player from getting first down. Fourth down and one, and Ruoff is going to attempt the field goal from the 21-yard line. 37-yard attempt. That's a live ball as he misses it, and Lockett will fall on it, and two seconds remain. So... The Los Angeles Cobras will maybe, Steve, uh, just kind of send the three guys down to the end zone and let Stevens air it out against the screen. What do you think? Well, I'd love to see it, frankly, Roger, because I'm in the end zone where Los Angeles will be throwing to, and we hope to get a chat with Cliff Branch as the half ends. I wouldn't see why not. I mean, that's the style. That's the offense that Los Angeles has anyway. So why not give it your best shot, air it out? You might bounce one off of a defender or even off the screen for six. Stevens is the quarterback. Oh, I'm disappointed. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> well, at halftime, the score, Los Angeles 25, New England 14, will now send you to Sports Center with John Saunders for all the scores and highlights right after these messages. It's a great concept, and it's, I think the best part of it is it gives some guys a chance to play. Guys who have had tryouts or haven't gotten a shot in the NFL, the NFL being such a numbers game, it gives everybody an opportunity to come out and make a living. As a quarterback, you watch this. It's eight on eight. You can only play man-to-man -man defense. What does that mean to a quarterback? Are you licking your chops back there? It makes it a lot easier not having to guess what the secondary is or having to read it on the way back. And I think it's a little bit easier, but if you get a tough... Uh, a tough cover guy, it could make it hard if you don't have the receiver that can get away from him. I'd love to have a Cliff Branch one-on-one -on -one with someone playing man-to-man. -man. We were talking about that just before we came to us uh, from Roger. Cliff Branch, as old as he is, 34, 35 years old, 14, 15 years in the NFL. I don't know how he does it, but he still looks like he's running the pass routes he did when he was 25. He's an amazing athlete. I think that's part of it. I played with a guy in New England named Harold Jackson who was very similar, and those guys don't miss a day of practice, never seem to lose a step, and are just very competitive, and I'm sure that's why he's playing. The one thing I asked NFL players especially about this game is do they think they could go both ways because that's what you have to do in arena football obviously as a quarterback you wouldn't have to do that but what are your thoughts on playing the two-way football that's good because I have trouble covering myself at night with a blanket I I could not cover any of these receivers uh, but I think it adds I think it adds to the excitement uh, it, it restricts some of the players that would have a shot of playing here uh, a guy that's a, a great receiver but can't cover anybody is not going to play a, a running back who can't get in and tackle people is not going to play so it makes the selection process that much more difficult and it just adds to the excitement you've seen new england play now this is the second game you see them play uh, los angeles going against them what do you think about tonight's game we've got to have to play i think it's an exciting game and it's such a quick scoring thing that anybody you know that the tide can change with a couple of passes uh, it's, it's good to see bombs uh, the length of the field, you know, it makes you feel good throwing a ball. Quarterbacks and receivers, be they young or old, love to see bombs the length of the field. Matt Cavanaugh, thanks for being with us tonight at halftime. Thanks, Steve. Enjoyed it. Roger? Okay, thank you very much. Good uh, crowd here tonight in Providence. A very vocal crowd. Of course, a lot more vocal in the first quarter when New England scored 14 points and leading by that score. But Los Angeles came back strong in the second quarter. Let's see what happens in the second half. We'll be back for the second half kickoff in the Providence Civic Center right after this. I tell you, he's gotten goofy. I like your dad. Dad? He thinks he's my brother. Last night we were shooting hoops at 10 o'clock. So? Marty, this is the same man who never lifted his nose out of a newspaper. 
Now we listen to Z-Rock on the radio. Hmm, what is this? The right vitamin nutrition in a balanced diet helps people get more out of life. Some are finding Kellogg's Product 19, 100% of 12 vitamins and minerals. I just wish he'd act his age, like your dad. Feel like 19 again. You know, that was a smart move. You mean renting that budget one-way mm -hmm. truck? I can't believe how much we saved. Well, budget doesn't charge you for round trip, yeah. just one way. And their rate was low to begin with. Mm -hmm. You know, it was kind of fun driving that truck. <laughs> yeah. Air conditioning, stereo. Automatic, power steering. It's mm. better in our car. Really? And to top it off, we got $50 off. Yeah, just by calling budget and mentioning arena football. Yeah, that budget one-way truck was the best move we ever made. This year, my son and I took some time to photograph the beauty of nature. I took pictures, he took pictures. Then naturally, we looked for the Kodak Color Watch Seal for great developing. The Color Watch Seal means a Kodak system checks the developing for great color, and every print is on Kodak paper. But a father and son see things differently. This is my idea of natural beauty, and this is his. The Kodak Color Watch system. You're going to thank me for it. Of course, he's single, see? Yeah. The Van Pattens meet the Yogi Berras. People ask us, what's a Jiffy Lube? Hey, what's a Jiffy Lube? Jiffy Lube is the place for car care convenience. In 10 minutes, the J Team changes the oil with quality Pens oil. Here comes the Pens oil. Replaces the filter, fills the fluids, and lubes the chassis. 14 services. And free coffee. So, so welcome to Jiffy Lube. Take care of you like family. And Yogi, Jiffy Lube helps your car last longer. With Jiffy Lube, it ain't over until it's over. We're back at halftime in Providence. Let's take a look at statistics from the first half as uh, Los Angeles and Matt Stevens, 9 of 11 on the passes. Harold Smith, 6 of 13, three TDs for L.A., two for New England. See the passing yards, 117 to 56 penalty yards. And, of course, L.A. got off that terrible start. They had six penalties in the first uh, eight plays of the game. Field goals, uh, 0 for 1 and 0 for 2, and the turnovers, uh, that one big turnover, of course, for the New England team. See the first quarter score in Hockaday's seven yard touchdown pass from Smith. Williams 30 yards, 14 to nothing, Rue off a couple of extra points. In the second quarter, though, it was all Los Angeles. Weppy Powell and the one yard touchdown run set up by the pass to McKnight. Branch 25 yards in the touchdown reception from Stevens. Uh, Kelly four yards in the reception from Stevens. And then Mullen on the 11 yard touchdown reception. So he's uh, gotten three different touchdown passes. And uh, finally, Zendejas with the extra point. And it's 25 14 as we're getting set for the second half on, is Bay Pirelli, the head coach of New England. Go, Nashik, go, and taking a look at that game plan, seeing if they can come up with something a little bit different uh, this half. Uh, although the first half, they played great football. Everything worked exactly right. But in the second quarter, uh, the defense came out awfully strong for the Los Angeles Cobras, especially the play of Derek Donald. He was most impressive and has obviously solidified himself on this team as Bernie Ruoff gets set to kick it off, which he does, a low line drive kick through the end zone. And Mullen lets it go. And they'll bring it out to the five yard line. And Los Angeles will put it in play from there as Matt Stevens comes out to run the show number one rated quarterback as we mentioned at arena football coming into this game 139 for 257 54 percent of his passes complete for over 1700 yards and 36 touchdowns he had three onto that tonight and steve he's having himself a pretty darn good year for a guy who we described earlier in the game as uh, being this up and down he's having uh, a whale of the year as a matter of fact quickly to the near side the intended receiver was locking and he dropped the football. You know, once again, we didn't mention the name of Jim Hockaday very often in the uh, in the first half. And, and let's let's see what happens now in the second half. Uh, I dare say we will mention it uh, in the second half. Again, knowing Hockaday and knowing Harold Smith, who he's got to go to the well with the guy that he believes is going to make the big play, and that's going to be Hockaday for this New England ball club. Second down and ten. Lockett comes to the near side. McKnight and Mullen split to the wide side. Stevens pass overthrown intended for Mullen and really had to throw it up in the air that time. A lot of pressure 
uh, from the players up front, including Jeff Oliver, number 89, who's playing his last game for the New England Steamrollers. It appears so. The Dallas Cowboys have expressed great interest in number 89 in the orange New England Steamroller jersey. There he is, Jeff Oliver out of Boston College, 6'4", 265 starter on offense and special teams for a couple of years. Fine football player. Dallas Cowboys are going to take a roll of the dice on this young man. Third down and ten. And the Cobra's very good in this particular category. 40% completion rate. That's second best in arena football. And that's that vertical offense going up top to lock a great catch and touchdown. He beat Brian Allen. And 45 yards on the touchdown pass as Lockett gets in the act. From Cal State forward, and look up and down this roster for the Los Angeles Cobras. Some small schools, but some big players who make some big plays. Wade Lockett making the catch again. Another kind of a dying quail path, and that's... I was going to say that. Those receivers have saved Stevens a couple of times. But, you know, it continued to float deep. It didn't die. It just kept floating. As Zendejas comes on... He's made 17 of 26 on the year, but just one of four tonight and make it one of five. So coming into this game, he was 16 of 21. I mean, he was doing awfully darn good now, just one of five. But L.A. with another score, they lead it 31-14. Up here, you catch him with experience. Got them where you want them. You head for the beer that goes down smooth as a mountain stream. Push. How are those horses doing? What horses? <laughs> head for the mountains of Bush beer. Roger Twivo, Steve Rabel with you in Providence. As L.A. has struck quickly once again, Steve. We'll just pick up where they left off as Zendejas will send it downfield. Not a very deep kick. Slayton takes it about three yards deep. And Webby Powell gives him a pop at the 12-yard line. Next to Fabray Collins, my favorite <laughs> name in arena football, Webby Powell. I know you jump on it every chance you get to say that name. New England, who comes out strong, comes out strong in the first quarter, moving up and down the field. And obviously, the penalties against L.A. really hurt them in the first quarter. But once they got on track, New England hasn't been able to get themselves going lately, and I think part of the problem here is something that Ray Wilsey told us this morning. He wants to get more pressure on the quarterback. Smith has taken some wicked shots as he releases the ball, and that's got to bother him. And he's going to release it here again, and the pass was tipped at the line of scrimmage intended for Alvin Williams, and the man who got a piece of it was 84 Dwayne Jackson, 6'5", 255, out of Cal State Sacramento. Again, another one of those kids out of a California school, not necessarily a UCLA or a USC, but some pretty good football players. And at 6'5", 255, Dwayne Jackson can get those big hands up there. And even a quarterback the size of Harold Smith, who's a little guy, has problems throwing over him. That's the key for Los Angeles, I think, as we enter this third quarter. And Jackson, who went to Merritt Junior College in Oakland, also played basketball at Cal State Sacramento. So show you that great athletic ability on second and 10. Smith airs it out. And Williams, the intended receiver, and I'll tell you what, Derek Donald has been most impressive tonight. I, I, I'll tell you what, he was an all-Atlantic Coast Conference performer, and he showed you a lot of outstanding moves so far this evening. Stride for stride, and you know what, uh, he's having a good time doing it. He's running downfield with all the receivers, the best that New England can throw at him, and he, as you say, is stride for stride with these guys. Here's a young man who had a great couple of seasons with North Carolina, had a chance to play in the Aloha Bowl and got sick the night before and was unable to play. So he's making up for that game, at least, out here tonight. Third down and 10. This has been the cross to bear for Bay Pirelli this year. They've not done very well in this particular down. As Smith is tackled and dumped. 55, Brian Clark for Cal State Northridge, the most excitable player. He also plays center on offense. 
and I've watched him. He gets more excited on the touchdown scored by L.A. than the guys that score the TDs. This guy has better high fives than all those ball carriers and receivers put together. As I as we mentioned just a couple minutes ago, good pressure up front controlling the line of scrimmage is a key for Ray Wilson. And the second sack for Brian Clark, and that's why he got so excited. He doesn't get to do that too often. It's Ruoff now with Smith holding from about three yards deep in the end zone. So if you're at a count at 61 yards, whether he'll go for it, he's got the leg, I believe, but he's trying to send it to the corner, which he does lock it, takes it right at the goal line. And Lockett gets it across the 15 to the 16-yard line. And with 9.50 left to go, third quarter, Los Angeles leads New England 31-14. Uh, yes, uh, I'd like two of those pizzas. Those pizzas? Uh, they'll be $17.99. $17.99? But it says $10.99. Well, not for those pizzas. How can that be? I think if you refer to the fine print. Fine print? It's not rendered vendor responsible. <laughs> May I help you? Uh, who are you? I'd like to introduce our corporate attorney. He's here on a regular basis. Well, I'm not surprised. At Little Caesars, you always get two great pizzas for one low price. Pizza, pizza. Only at Little Caesars. Get ready for thunder. Thursday night, explode with thundering power and lightning speed. First, the green flag is raised on ESPN Speed Week, a recap of the top events in motorsports. Then it's motorized mayhem featuring rugged off-road racing, the lightning speed of the dragsters, car-crushing excitement, mud box truck and tractor pulls, and the live thrills of bone-jarring USAC racing. Experience Thursday night thunder on ESPN. Roger Twivel, Steve Rabel back with you. Steve just heard Ray Wilsey down on the sideline telling Matt Stevens, be patient now, be patient. What he wants to be careful of is not giving this ball right back to New England in good field position so that they can probably get something going. However, the way New England has been intercepting or not intercepting passes during this season, it's been most difficult for them. Pretty good uh, numbers since that first quarter. Of course, he only had one chance in the first quarter. They only had the ball one time. Stevens going down, intercepted. Intercepted by Brian Allen, number 30. Allen, who was the man beaten on the touchdown pass to Lockett just a few moments ago, comes up with the interception for the New England Steamrollers. And Brian Allen with his biggest play as a member of the Steamrollers. Stevens not as patient as Ray Wilsey would like him, him to have been. Ball way overthrown. Joe Kelly not a chance to make that catch, but Brian Allen could catch it, and he does. That just... According to the numbers I see, the third interception on the year for New England. First one tonight. And, of course, the first for Brian Allen. So the big turnover that New England was looking for. Hockaday back in the game on offense. Let's see who Harold Smith goes to. And Pirelli told us that we even have a hard time intercepting the pass in practice. We saw Hockaday drop one last week against New York right in his hands. Gardner was the man in motion. Smith, Scott. Well, so many times that motion man with the great advantage because Steve you can start running up field in arena football before the ball is snapped and he gets that little extra step and that poor defender's got to sit back there and say uh oh where are you going to go now because you've got as you say that extra step coming off that line of scrimmage Brian Gardner from Prairie View A&M on the reception they have not run the ball since the first quarter when they had little or no success Jones four carries no yards they haven't gone back to it doesn't help that they're behind as well by 17 points. Second and one, and a battle going on between Kelly and Alvin Williams, and finally a flag is thrown. One official in the center of the field could not see that the quarterback had thrown the ball, but there was a push out of bounds farther than five yards down the field, so there's no question about it. It should be pass interference. And we'll let the official call it. Why not? The That's his job. There is no foul. The ball was not catchable. The ball was thrown out of the end zone. Second down. Well, the ball's not catchable. There's the ruling. Babe Perilli out on the field. Now he just wants to talk to his quarterback. Jim Hockaday tries to argue the point to no avail. So the penalty does not stand, and it's second and less third and less than a yard. You know, one of the things that uh, Los Angeles has done so far tonight to Harold Smith, what Ray Wilsey told us earlier today that he wanted to do was not let Smith get out and scramble to the outside that if, if he was going to beat him, let him 
beat him, come up the middle with it. And so far, they've done a good job of containing him. Yeah, haven't seen too many sacks yet by Los Angeles, but they have put some shots on him. Third down and one. The option, Smith has it. Smith inside the five, down to the one-foot line. This big kid from Texas Southern is capable of running the football. You hate to do it too often, but at 6'3 and 205, he shows you some good moves here. Well, that's why Babe Pirelli is the coach, and we're up here because I don't think in 100 years I would think to call an option play with Harold Smith in a third and very, very short situation. Maybe give it to Cletus Jones, but great read by Smith finding the seam, breaking back against the grain, and if it's not for Rodgers or... Derek Donald there to make the play. He goes all the way. Clock running, 7.50 left to go. Third quarter. First and goal. Smith, the sneak, a whistle, and a fly. I got encroachment by the linebacker. Dead ball. I'm hearing encroachment by the linebacker as Smith spikes it into the stands. So Smith takes matters into his own hands, and Babe Pirelli's got to like watching his quarterback take control. Encroachment, dead ball, still first down, half the distance. Encroachment, the dead ball. They never snap the ball, we play it over. Smith has carried the ball now seven times this year, and he's into the plus category with that uh, pickup. He was uh, six for minus one, so he's got himself into the plus side. He's got one rushing touchdown, and let's see if it's Smith or if it's Cletus Jones, 44. Ah, Smith wanted that. You know after that option run that he wanted to go ahead and punch it on in to get that big spike. Yeah, you're not going to keep this big kid out, and the fans here in Providence love it. Get an opportunity to see if their team is going to make it to the playoffs, and this is a big, big game for both these teams as far as playoffs are concerned. There's the reverse shot. Good push off the offensive front by Donald the guys. Thompson, 67. Donald Thompson, Jim Johnson, Sylvester Bembry, Kevin Murphy, all the big guys up front. Now, Ruoff for the point after. Out of the hold of Harold Smith, and he missed it. 6.46 left to go, third quarter. Los Angeles with a 31-20 lead. Mornings are my quiet time. Afternoons, well. You know the stresses of the workday. That's why I eat Wheaties. If I don't get a good start in the morning, I might feel peaked. I hate that. Wheaties, 100% whole wheat, naturally low in sugar. That's champion nutrition. What the big boys eat. Well, Bay Pirelli gets his first touchdown since the first quarter as Smith punches it across, set up by the interception. So the turnover by Los Angeles. And it was just moments after Ray Wilsey said, Matt, Matt, be patient. Be, be patient. patient. Now there's a, an illegal defense call while we're away on the commercial. So let's see if New England is going to try kicking it again or whether they're going to go for two. I don't see Bernie Ruoff out there on the field. Well, they so. placed it at the two-and-a-half-yard line. 31-20 is the score. So they're going to go for the two. Why not? They gave Ruoff his chance. He missed it. So sure. sure. Little option again. Cuts it back across the grain and in. So another penalty against Los Angeles. Two turnovers by the Cobras cost them eight points right there. The interception and then the penalty on the extra point. And all of Harold Smith's family and friends down in Houston where he lives during the offseason are happy to see that young man take the bull by the horns on that drive, run the ball, throw the ball, but most importantly, get it in the end zone himself. This is really a momentum game. You were talking to Matt Cavanaugh about it, and New England dominated the first quarter. L.A. then the defense kind of got them going. Second quarter, they came out and scored in the first possession. Now the interception, the two-point conversion. It'll be interesting to see if, if New England can hold it through the third now. And no matter what people say about this being a big, big offensive game, it's the big defensive play, the turnover, that changes the momentum. Ruoff sends it down to the corner, and it is caught by Richard Rodgers, but he steps across the end line. Five. 
as Oliver, 89, came down and hit about four people. He's getting in all of his licks, folks, while he can. His last game. <laughs> Very vocal crowd here tonight at the Civic Center in Providence, Rhode Island. You see the penalty situation there. Six of those penalties in the first three minutes of the game against Los Angeles is Stevens will have it first and ten from the five-yard line and immediately finds a receiver on the far side. That's Rogers, 25. Again, Richard Rogers, more defensive player than receiver, but in this game, as again we talk to Matt Cavanaugh about playing two-way football, and I love the responses. I can't even cover myself at night when I'm in bed, let alone cover a player out there on the field. A lot of respect for these guys who have to come over after having played receiver or running back and turn right around and play defense. But, you know, as we all know, kickers and quarterbacks yeah. are a different breed, right? Sure, they don't have to play two ways out here in arena football. Second down and five yards. Stevens near side. Kelly couldn't quite get a handle on it. And Brian Allen was right there to make sure that he did it. Kelly wanted that one for the new baby back home. You mentioned a little earlier, proud papa. He and his wife, Andrea, just a couple weeks ago. Congratulations to Joe Kelly out of Vanderbilt. And there's a young guy that can, you know, really learn a lot from a player like Cliff Branch. Here's the pass, leaping high, a little bit behind him, had it in his hands, should have made the catch. Now, Brian Allen played his first two years at the University of Kentucky, then transferred to Cal State Fullerton. Well, Kentucky turns out some great... Uh, well, I, I brought that up. I thought you would. Your friend, Louisville. Oh, that's right. Third down and five. Stevens, good catch by Rodgers. He's got the first down. Ooh, big hit right there. Hockaday, that's, that's the situation the receivers hate. Allen had him by the ankles, and you're sitting there, you're trying to lean forward and get an extra yard, and, and watch 85 come on and take the cheap one. And who, and who knows better about standing up like that as a receiver and fighting for the yardage than Hockaday oh. himself, who does oh. it all the time. This is his chance to maybe give a little payback to the guys who hit him. Yeah, but you know what? Rodgers gets to play on the other side of the ball, so he can he can give it back, too. He will. Clock running, 427 to go in the third. First down and 10 for the Los Angeles Cobras. Good protection again. Rodgers, the guy, and there's Hockaday again. Hockaday going for the top. Gardner had him down low, and the flag is thrown. And it may go against Rodgers. A little taunting down there, perhaps a little unsportsmanlike conduct. Looked like Rodgers maybe shoved the ball at Hockaday, and Hockaday took a little poke at him. It wasn't much, I'll tell you. No. But the officials want to keep control of this game. Taunting, five-yard penalty, defense. Haunting. It's going to be against Hockaday. Well, he now see now, he stuck his head in there. There's Hockaday knocking him down. There is the call, sticking the ball in. Well, it's not like he smacked him or anything. He's just handing the ball. Of course, he handed it to him into his face. Basically, mask. what he's saying, Steve, he says, "I can take that shot and any shot you want to give me." All right, here's the ball. I'm going to go back to the huddle. Now let's see if they're going to mark it off or not. There they go. There's the mark off. Matt Stevens was trying to argue the case for Los Angeles. No such luck. Again, a penalty jumps up and bites L.A. That's the last thing they need right now while they're trying to keep control of this ball game. Well, now they called it against L.A. Right. Rogers with the taunt. Rogers. He handed him the ball. Smack. Uh, no, no, no. No, no. Hockaday smacked him in the helmet. Well, whatever. It's funny. It's yeah, Rogers smacked Hockaday with the ball first, and then Hockaday smacked back. Gotcha. Rogers has got it this time, and he's knocked out of bounds across midfield at the 22-yard line. Nothing seems to bother Richard Rogers too much. He just catches the ball, then comes back to the right huddle and said, right send it to me again. I'll get ready. I'll go for it. Played for the Denver Dynamite last year, who won the Arena Bowl. He was the guy, we brought this up earlier in the season. In fact, the first ball game we saw Los Angeles, he was the guy who was in on the play that Cal Stanford fans will remember for eons to come. The Joe Cap design, pitch back on the kickoff until finally somebody ran it in for a touchdown. He was out there on the play. 3.30 left to go, third quarter. Third down and one. Stevens does a good job getting rid of it. Kelly with a catch and a touchdown. 
What a job by Matt Stevens that time. Ray Wilsey was halfway out on the field congratulating his quarterback that time. Kelly with a nice catch, almost diving out there for the play. Steve watch it. He has a hard time getting a hold of the ball after the snap. But he scrambles out of trouble, lets it go, protects himself. Oh, did he take a shot against the boards? And look at the outstretched catch by Joe Kelly. You know, Brian Allen, who was on the coverage there, hesitated for a moment, started to come up, and by then it was too late. Kelly was by him. Second touchdown pass to Joe Kelly tonight. And Zendejas to attempt the point after. Out of the hold of Mendoza. And it's good. And the kick is good for one. 2-3 left to go third quarter 38 22 watch Stevens get chased out of the pocket now he'll release this pass and really get drilled but here on the other end Joe Kelly with the catch Gillette has changed the face of shaving first we made it closer then we made it smoother. After a plus, its Lubra Smooth Strip actually releases lubricants to glide the razor more smoothly. Incredible smoothness from the first stroke to the last. The Atra Plus system. First we made it closer, then we made it smoother. A little over 6,000 on hand at the Providence Civic Center as the steamrollers trail it by 16 38 22 with 234 to go in the third Brian Gardner back to receive the kickoff from Marty Zendejas good low line drive kick by Zendejas there so New England will have it first and ten from the five we mentioned again Zendejas doesn't have the big strong leg to kick it deep and into the net and give his teammates time to get down and cover it but he's a good directional kicker and that time a fine job kicking it out of the end zone forcing the ball to be brought out to the five where New England will take over you're looking at 85 Jim Hockaday there and that's the guy that New England has to find if they want to get back in this game he'll come to the near side along with Brian Gardner but Harold Smith does not want to force the ball in there he's also got to look for Gardner as well Hockaday is the big play man he goes underneath the Gardner Right there on top of him is Derek Donald. Donald has made the big plays so far tonight for the Los Angeles Cobras. And I'll tell you what, Steve, after those receivers from doing the catch the ball, they're not going anywhere when he's around. No, he definitely leaves his calling card. And again, we talk about offense in arena football and the things that you have to do offensively to win. But more and more coaches in this league are saying that a couple of good defensive players, a Craig Walls from Pittsburgh, a uh, Derek Donald, with Los Angeles are impact players. They're the ones who will make the big plays to turn the momentum around. Second and five, Smith under pressure and does a good job just to release it. As number 55, Brian Clark, was applying the pressure up front. Also there was number 60, Chuck Harris, as you look at Derek Donald. There's Tar Heels from North Carolina. Here's a look at 60, Chuck Harris. He's lifted a weight or two, hasn't he? I'd say so. And again, one of the big guys up front for Los Angeles who playing Ray Woolsey's kind of ball out here tonight, his game plan, control that line of scrimmage. It's up to he and Brian Clark and Derek Jackson. Third and four. A minute 15 to go, third quarter. Smith hangs in there, going to Hockaday. And he steps out of bounds at the one-yard line and a penalty marker goes down. I'll tell you what, Smith hung tough that time. He had a lot of pressure on him, took a big hit just as he let it go. Great concentration by Hockaday on the far sidelines. Had Derek Lockett, a Wade Lockett, excuse me, all over him. And makes the catch over the shoulder. We'll check out the flag here in just a moment, but it looks like the pass play is going to stand. Defensive pass in the third. Decline, first down. Now watch it, man to man in this game, so it's just you against me, pal, and it's gonna be a foot race with Hockaday and Lockett. And look at Hockaday, watch him following that ball, and there, the interference. The hand comes around, grabs Hockaday right around the chin, and still, Jim Hockaday with a 38-yard pass reception, able to concentrate, 
and make that catch. One more time, you can see the hand up to the face mask of Lockett. Wade Lockett's had his hands full tonight with his counterpart from the New England Steamrollers. And that gives New England the football. Now, what do you, it's a one foot line. I was going to say, what do you think again? Maybe another uh, little option action here? Harold Smith could not get back to the right. field to bring that well, play on. Now, time has run out, but New England was trying to call a timeout. So they're going to figure it out. We'll be back to Providence right after this. I don't give a shit how much time is on the drive. If I don't get a good start in the morning, I might feel peaked. I hate that. Wheaties, 100% whole wheat, naturally low in sugar. That's champion nutrition. What the big boys eat. Metro Media Paging presents The Unreachables. My business takes me near and far. People get vexed when they can't reach me. Like yesterday, my boss couldn't reach me to tell me I was transferred to the West Coast. I was unreachable. Last night, I bought a house in New Jersey. This morning, I called Metro Media Paging and asked for the reachable system. This unreachable is now reachable. I hope it's my real estate agent. The reachable system from Metro Media Paging. Call 1-800-437-BEEP. The days of the unreachables are over. I did. You looking for Mr. Wright? Give this guy a light. Yeah. And Bud Light here. Ooh. Ask for Bud Light. The light beer with the first name and taste. Because everything else is just a light. Thanks. Keep the chains. ESPN lets the good times roll as America's top bowlers try to strike it rich. TBA Player of the Year Marshall Coleman leads the <laughs> Seattle Open Wednesday night live on ESPN. Cut your car payments in half, New England. And come to your senses at Lowell Hyundai. Only Lowell Hyundai can cut your 1988 payments in half on any new Hyundai in stock. Excels from $69.50 per month for 88 with only $95 down. Choose a sedan or hatchback, automatic or five-speed, and Lowell Hyundai will literally cut your 88 car payments in half. Or get up to $1,500 cash back. The choice is yours. Half payments for 88 or up to $1,500 cash back with only $95 down. Only at Lowell Hyundai. Don't miss it. Rock 101, GIRFM, Northern New England's number one rock and roll radio station. The best in new and classic rock on compact disc. Rock 101, GIRFM, the home of rock and roll. With live broadcasts around the globe and tickets to the hottest concerts worldwide. Defining rock and roll. Northern New England's number one rock and roll radio station. Rock 101, GIRFM. Turn it up. Taking a look at uh, head coach Babe Pirelli of the New England Steamrollers. What a great career that man had as a quarterback uh, in many different leagues. And three seconds have been put back on the clock, so we actually haven't ended the third quarter. New England called for a timeout, and they got it. Uh, so they have it now. First and goal, and we happen to hear a play call. Yeah, I believe we can look for the sneak right here with Harold Smith going to the well once again, and they will go for one point. They will go for the extra point. Smith looks like he got across the officials say no so we'll take another crack at it the next quarter and that's the end of the third quarter we'll keep it right here 38 22 the Los Angeles Cobras lead the New England steamrollers and if you Look down at Babe Perot. Hey, Harold. Harold. All right. Let's do this. Let's go with our 14 outside. Here it is. No, you want to take it? All right, go get it then. Here, here's what you do. Look. Go for set. And just go second set. See what it is. Babe Perelli. Babe Perelli looking perhaps to maybe try the option or maybe throw a pass and. Harold said, hey, we're this far away. Let's just sneak it across. Let's get in. Babe said, sure, go ahead. Listen, that's just the type of quarterback Pirelli was. I'm sure the coach would be on the sideline. Babe, nah, give it, let me, I'll just take it. Babe Don't said, worry sure. about it. You got to go with it. Smith got it. Second rushing touchdown of the night for Harold Smith. And Ruoff will come on. So Harold Smith is getting the job done tonight. 
by putting the ball in the air. Had some help by a especially great catch by Hockaday just a couple moments ago. And then he's the one running it in. So now they're going to go for the single. They're going to go for the point after touchdown. Ruoff is on for the kick. That'll make it 38-29 and a nine-point margin. And, and really, it's, it's awfully early to start thinking about well, maybe you want to start thinking about it as Ruoff misses the point after, but a lot of time left, 14-23 to go in the game, and New England trails by 10. Our drinking has been invaded by Al Puppets. Please help. Hey, I'm hungry. Yo, want a Whopper? No problem. Just two ninety nine and a flame broiled Whopper or large sandwich gets you your own Alf. Four different furry aliens. Each comes with his own record. Cause we're doing the Melmac truck. These aliens are friendly, but they're getting out of hand. <laughs> Hurry, just two ninety nine gets another Alf out of here. We do it like you do it at Burger King. Oh, where'd you park? <laughs> Along with Steve Rabel, I'm Roger Twibel. The Civic Center, Providence, Rhode Island. 14-23 left to go in this arena football game between the New England Steamrollers and the Los Angeles Cobras. Oh, oh, Steamrollers oh. kicking off. Ruoff sent it up into the stands. And what they'll do is they'll mark it where the ball went out of bounds. And when you hit one up in the stands here, folks, whether it's by kicking it or throwing it, the, the fans get to keep it. And the ball now will come out to the 20-yard line for Los Angeles. So not only did Bernie Ruoff miss that point after touchdown, which is important in a close game like this, now he kicks it out of bounds before it gets to the end zone. That means Los Angeles has great field position. They do. First and 10 from the 20. Stevens airs it out right away. Lock a touchdown. Don't take long. Do it. <laughs> he said. And, you know, we have seen it so many times in arena football, Roger. One team up and down the field takes him a while to score and here comes Stevens in one play he puts LA right back out in front with a pretty comfortable lead Brian Allen the defender just tripped he, he made a reach and it looked like he got his feet tied up and Matt Stevens now with yet another touchdown pass that's his fifth Wade Lockett's having himself a pretty good night as well and Dejas to attempt the point after. Bad snap from center. Let's see what happens with it. This can make the highlight reel. Zendejas, oh, he falls on a good move. Yeah. Good move. Those guys are too big to be challenging out oh, there. Hey, listen, he's in the restaurant business in Chino, <laughs> California. It's a Mexican restaurant called Zendejas. He, he knows where he's going back after the season. Right. He doesn't want to be limping around. Since you don't buy a refrigerator every day. I finally got a Frigidaire. Ask for the one that lasts and lasts. I should have bought a Frigidaire. I finally got a Frigidaire. For the Frigidaire dealer nearest you, call 1-800-451-7007. I'll take the Frigidaire. Now. Frigidaire, here today, here tomorrow. You'll flip over USAC midgets and sprints. These powerful race cars make for an exciting challenge. Good things come in small packages. USAC Racing, Thursday night, live on ESPN. There's a look at the score by quarter so far. New England dominated the first quarter, LA the second, 13 to eight in the third, and now each team has go. scored a touchdown in the fourth quarter. 13.08 left to go. And Los Angeles with the 44-28 lead. Brian Gardner, the man back. Stevens now with six touchdown passes. Tonight. Maybe more importantly, how they score. New England has to take some time to move up and down the field. L.A. scores in one play. Boy, good kick there by Zendejas that time. Matt Stevens obviously happy. Cliff Branch pretty happy, too, on the receiving end of... One of his touchdowns. Don't start cheering yet. Well, hi, Steve and Barbara and Brett, for those of you that didn't catch it. That's why he's the leading passer in arena football. Numbers just like that. First down and 10 now for the Rollers and quarterback Harold Smith. 
throw it underneath. Gardner gets smacked about three times. McKnight was the first to hit him. Lockett came up and got a stick in. And this is the way New England has been going of late. They've gone with the shorter passes and a player down on the field for the New England Steamrollers is number 54. That's Kevin Murphy. Kevin Murphy, not only one of their better offensive players, but certainly one of their best defensive players. He and Sylvester Bembry, the sack guys for this New England team, although we haven't called their names very often tonight. And again, Murphy once. Yeah, Wilsey's done a good job getting his offensive line prepared to protect the quarterback and to do the sacking as well. Let's take a look and see if we can see what happened to Kevin Murphy in the middle of your screen right here, number 54 in the orange shirt. He just looks like he maybe got rolled over on his ankle or got kicked in the ribs or something as he was going down. At any rate, he remains on the turf here at the Providence Civic Center. You, you've had a, a badly sprained ankle, and there's nothing uglier to look at on slow motion. Did you did you see the uh, Isaiah Thomas the other night? I mean, it just you, you see it, and you don't ever want to see it like that again. You just cringe because you can't stand it. The kind of guts that it takes to go out there then and do what he did afterwards, and that's play. And these guys at this time of the season, especially when you're playing both ways, all of these guys out here on this field are playing with dings and dents and bruises, and some with a lot more than that sprains and what have you so Kevin Murphy from Boston University just up the road 63 and 265 down on the field and being attended to by the steamrollers trainer Babe Pirelli over well, the sideline talking to his assistant coaches George Brancato and Rick Buffington as Murphy gets up now. As Murphy slowly leaves the field, Babe Perilli's watching again one of his best pass rushers walk off. Has a sack tonight, four and a half coming into tonight's game. Three of them against Chicago just a couple weeks ago against the number one team in all of arena football. And his running mate Sylvester Bembry, the third leading sacker in the league. So they've got two guys in the top five in Murphy and Bembry. Second down and four now. Gardner will come in motion to the near side. And they find Alvin Williams. Penalty markers down. Harold Smith that time finding Gardner on the short underneath route. When quite frankly, he ought to be moving that ball a little bit further downfield. While there is 12.05 left on the clock, this clock, remember, continues to Illegal run. Formation, New England. And New England, we heard the official talking to Babe Perilli on the sideline a little bit earlier about the formation and about making sure that the eligible receiver inside the eligible offensive lineman, the tight end type, is not covered. To report with an ineligible number. That time, tight end failed to report with an ineligible number. So again, little mental mistakes Little mental mistakes are hurting New England. Same kind of mental mistakes that hurt Los Angeles early on in the game. We're told Murphy just got smacked in the back of the head, shaken up. That's what they call a ding. And uh, he will return. Well, we've seen New England move away from the running game that they started with tonight. And in the next minute or so, at the very latest, they're going to have to move away, I think, from this short passing game and start moving that ball a little further downfield because they've got to put some points on the board. Williams, the man in motion. And second down and seven. Smith is dumped by Weppy Powell, and that's a safety. Weppy Powell, I was going to say, it looks like Smith is going to get outside and scramble, but Weppy Powell simply too quick and is able to get in there for the sack. His fifth and a half, if you will, on the year. And this was just great pursuit by Weppy Powell, who came looping in there. Finding the open area. We talked about him early in the season as being a pretty fair running back, and the Cobras were happy to find this young man. Now it turns out that he's playing uh, probably better on defense than he is on offense. He doesn't see a lot of action running the ball for Los Angeles uh, this time of year. Three and a half sacks, as you said, coming into the ballgame this evening. San Jose State, 220 pounds, another one of those fire plug type guys that you love to have. Good blocker as well. That's another case where Harold Smith probably should have just got rid of the football. You got to you got to be able to anticipate how close that man is to you. And now, of course, uh, with the safety, as Powell is happy, <laughs> the universal language, right, right. on television. Hi, my mom, and we're number one. 
Pretty much everybody understands that, and all the folks back in Los Angeles watching their hometown Cobras. Ball hitting up in the ceiling and dropping down and will be marked from the point it hit. And so New England, boy, had insult to injury. They get sacked for a loss and a safety a moment ago, and now kick the ball in the ceiling, and it's going to be marked, and Los Angeles will have it in midfield. I don't know. Maybe they can dig down deeper and put the, put the field down lower, huh? <laughs> and yet, remember, a week ago, we're in Madison Square Garden. We're in Madison Square Garden, and you can kick the ball not as absolutely as high as you want, but a lot more room up there to work with. It's something that these kickers have to adjust to. 11-15 left to go in this football game. 46-28 now. Richard Rodgers makes the catch at the 18-yard line. So now here's the time for Los Angeles to start their short passing attack. Maybe even give the ball to Weppy Powell once in a while. Let him blast into the middle. We haven't seen him run tonight, so probably New England would not be looking for that. Second down and five. 10.45 as the clock will continue to run in this fourth quarter until the final minute when it'll stop on incomplete passes and out of bounds plays. L.A. will take their own sweet time right now. Stevens gets out of the pocket going back across the drain. Branch the intended receiver and it was thrown low. Alvin Williams, the man on the cover. And this is what can really wear down a defense, Steve, at this time of the game is when the quarterback decides to that scramble a little bit. And remember, remember again, these same, these same defensive players who are chasing around the offense, chasing around a guy like Cliff Branch, who, you know, the elder statesman of this team, the elder statesman of the league, as a matter of fact, he's older than some of the coaches that are playing in, uh, in coaching arena. For some of the announcers, too. That's, that's right. But all these guys really look up to him, and they go to him. They ask him for advice. They look to him for leadership on this ball club and he's been in the thick of things even though he's been out for the last few weeks with an injury. You can tell Stevens has been more successful on the longer passes. Third down and five. Rogers in motion. Got Branch wide open. Good defensive play by Brian Gardner. That time Cliff Branch was wide open in the end zone and Stevens just He's pointed himself in the head after the play. He just really blew it. Now look at the ball float. You've got to throw this one. When you've got a guy like that and a defender between the receiver and the quarterback, you've got to get that ball on the line. You can't just float it up there and give that defender a chance to react. Now, Zendaya has to attempt the field goal. It will be, let's call it 42 yards. He has not made one over 40 yards this year. Now he has. Yes, sir. So Marty Zendejas with his first 40-yard-plus field goal in arena football. And the Cobras now with a 49-28 lead. 8.52 left to go from the Civic Center in Providence. And we'll return in a moment. Thanks again, boys. And keep the change. You hear all this nonsense about Kellogg's Frosted Flakes being just for kids. Well, I, for one, eat them. And I'm going to go right on eating them. Frosted Flakes just for kids. Come on. Like we adults have to go sneaking around. Like we can't love these crisp, sweet flakes just as much as kids. Mm. Who is it? You just have to admit it. Frosted Flakes have the taste adults have grown to love. They're great. Here's Matt McKnight from Fresno State. Had a big game last week against Detroit. A couple of interceptions. Gary Mullen, one of the top receivers in arena football. This Los Angeles team hasn't had a lot to be happy about on the sidelines the last couple of weeks. <laughs> you gotta like that now. face. He doesn't care if he's on camera. He's he's in a football game. Stoic. And that's, that's concentrating. Good, good way to put it. And again, as many times as we've seen touchdowns scored in the blink of an eye around here, no lead is too big in arena football. Zendejas. And Slayton takes it about three yards deep. Across the 15, out to the 17-yard line, where Tony Palomero makes the tackle. Tony, who had that good block on the touchdown earlier in the game, will stay in. And New England has got to get something going now with 8.42 left to go. 
and they can't take any time in doing it either. Take a look at the quarterback comparison. Smith got off to such a great start. Usually he has been a slow starter this year to really come on strong. I think part of his good start was the fact that they were mixing the run in there and he was getting comfortable. And Stevens, of course, with the great numbers, one of the reasons why Los Angeles is the number one passing team in the region football and after tonight's performance they will probably stay atop that category against the number one defense New England's given up a lot of yards to them Hockaday's in motion and they'll run it this time Joe Williams and Derek Donald I'll tell you what I can just imagine him playing college football in North Carolina when that sweep comes coming up and he's either going to take on the blocker usually and then go after the runner but he's got to be licking his chops now because there aren't any blockers out there he's, he's just looking to tackle and he's playing with so much confidence right now too there's Marty Zendejas. I'll tell you what, a host of Zendejas's who've kicked in college and professional football. Older brother Tony played at Nevada Reno, of course, and with the Oilers. Uh, several cousins, including Max and Louie and Allen, who's at Arizona State right now. Great family tradition. Smith is able to get rid of it, but Wesley Walton, 46, had a hand on him. Walton, who's the intellectual of the Los Angeles Cobras from Lehigh, who spent some time uh, studying the ozone there in the Antarctic. Also worked on Wall Street, so how those two tie together, I'm not sure, but at any rate, Harold Smith wishes that uh, Walton was back in the Antarctic region as he collars Harold Smith, and the ball just flutters down the middle of the field. Brian Gardner nowhere near it, nor Alvin Williams. Neither could get to that one. Taking a lot of time in the huddle right now with 6.53 to go on the clock running. You've almost got to hurry up every time, just get up to the line of scrimmage. But once again, this is two-way football, and it's tough to do. Smith with pressure from Walton again. Throws it back across the grain to Hockaday, and Hockaday stopped thinking that maybe it would go off the net. And Smith got leveled by Wesley Walton. And he's not only slow to get up, but limping a bit as he heads back to the field. Now, if... If for whatever reason Harold Smith either leaves the game or is injured, Paul Williams is his backup. Number seven would come in, but Harold Williams is a real tough competitor. Whether he's having a great night or not, he hangs in there and gives Bay Pirelli just about everything he has to offer. Fourth down and seven, and Ruoff will attempt the field goal. Smith will put it down at the 12. 46 yards by the veteran from Canada just misses that's a live football Kelly picks it up and he is triple team 10 Cliff Branch was also back there Cliff unable to get the handle on it as Jeff Oliver for New England for the steamrollers the young man heading off to Dallas after the night's game we wish him the best timeout with 550 left to go in the game 49 28 the Cobras lead the steamrollers in profits. Check out time, Garfield. Check out. Embassy Suites Hotel was a great idea, huh? We got a two-room suite with a wet bar and a refrigerator. So what's the big rush? And all for about the same price as a room in most Marriott's or Hyatt's. There's even a free cook-to-order breakfast every morning. Delicious. What a great place to do business. That settles it. We're staying. At Embassy Suites Hotels, you don't have to be a fat cat to enjoy the sweet life. No, but it doesn't hurt. 49-28, 550 left to go here in Providence, Rhode Island. Los Angeles will have the football at the 10-yard line. Larry Hill is the referee. Forty-five, and the clock's running. It will stop in the final minute. On out of bounds and incomplete passes. Rogers with the reception at the 12. And Steve, I imagine that's what Los Angeles will try to do, just the short underneath step. And maybe a run from time to time, but I don't think, unless, again, Matt Stevens maybe gets into some trouble back there and is chased out of the pocket and finds a guy like Cliff Branch or one of his other receivers running downfield wide open, I can't imagine that Ray Wilsey's going to want to call too many deep passes at this point. Just trying to control that ball and continue to let that clock run, which, again, in this situation, obviously favors Los Angeles. Well out in front, and the clock, as you've mentioned, runs right down till the one-minute mark. Then it will stop on dead balls and out of bounds, etc. 
Under five minutes left to go. 49-28. Second down and seven. Stevens going deep to Grant. Can you believe he overthrew it? He only had Williams B by about eight yards. And folks, it was a 40-yard field. And Matt Stevens with his hands down. That's twice now he's had Branch for touchdown receptions and hasn't been able to hook up. And I think Matt was probably thinking that, hey, Providence or New England will be hanging in there looking for that short pass. Let's go up on top on him. And again, with the point differential being important in the playoffs as well, the more points Los Angeles can score and get out there, the better chance they have to set themselves up for postseason play. Again, Cliff Branch wide open on that one, just unable to hook up. Third down and seven. 4-10 left to go in this football game. New England putting some pressure on, and a good job that time as 88 Joe Williams was able to get in on Matt Stevens. And, of course, one of the fans made a great catch in the stands, and they get to keep the football. And while a fan made a great catch, something caught in the back of Cliff Branch's leg. He grabbed his hamstring as he was slowing down, and he's going to be helped from the field. Now, Cliff Branch, again, no kid. 15 years in the NFL has been out for weeks and weeks with a severe groin sprain, pulled muscle in his groin. He's now leaving as he grabbed that hamstring. He was a sprinter at the University of Colorado, came out of Houston, Texas. Always a tremendous track man besides a football player and always has been troubled with groin and hamstring pulls. There are those guys, Steve, you can think back on Norm Bulash was one who always had a hamstring. The guys that are exceptionally fast, heavily muscled, and Branch right there pulling up with that, uh, that leg problem. And it's tough on a guy like Cliff, too, because you heard him at halftime. He really enjoys this out here, and he's had a tough time sitting around watching everybody else play while he was hurt the last few weeks, and now it looks as though he may miss some more time. Now, Zendejas, it'll be a 53-yard field goal attempt, or... He gave it a ride that time and sends Slayton back about six yards deep in the end zone. And Slayton is drilled out of bounds at the 15. Tony Palomero, who's really had a good game, came over to make the tackle, and New England will have it now with 3.22 left to go. They need three touchdowns. We'll be back right after this. Mmm, doesn't that look good? Fresh, hot, New York-style pizza from Espresso Pizza. At Espresso Pizza, the freshest ingredients are used to make the best crispy crust cheese pizza in town. And for less than $5. When you want a snack, or a meal, or feed a whole party, come to Espresso Pizza, 85 Main Street, downtown Nashua. Or call 889-9826. We also offer large order discounts. So next time you're in the mood for a great pizza, make it Espresso Pizza. Auto Lab, we sell service. With over 50 years combined experience, our trained staff offers the finest full automotive services. Come in now and receive a tune-up special that includes complete electronic engine analysis, spark plugs, timing adjustments, charging, fuel and starter system checks, air filter and PCV valve checks, plus road tests. The Auto Lab, with ASE certified technicians, plus state inspections and emission testing. The Auto Lab, located at the corner of East Hollis and Spruce Street in Nashua. Quality work done right the first time. 49-28, L.A. leads, and if that score remains that way, Los Angeles will move to 4-5, and five, New England will drop to 2-7, and seven, and we'll be in Los Angeles next Saturday night against the New York Knights. Uh, be with us at 8.30 Eastern time for the start of that game, and Cliff Branch, by the way, uh, has had that hamstring pop on him again, and he'll sit out the remainder of this game, 3.22 to go. And very likely, if it's a serious injury, we may not see him on the field for the Cobras next week when we travel down there. Harold Smith, lots of pressure on him, throws underneath, and I'll tell you what, L.A. will give him that pass for the rest of the game. Completed to Alvin Williams. And again, in on another tackle is Derek Donald, who, incidentally, this New England team had a shot at. Number 26 for Los Angeles. There you see Cliff Branch already has the ice on the injured hamstring. Now it's hurry up time. Second and six, penalty marker down as they finally find Hockaday. And it's a mystery to me why New England hasn't been able to do that, whether they have chosen to look elsewhere, whether they've used him as a decoy, or whether the L.A. defense has just been so good. Well, we have seen him shadowed, Hockaday shadowed all night. He has not been but a step away from 
defense. A Los Angeles uh, defender. Illegal formation, offense, the penalties offset. And we have offsetting Replay. penalties. But again, I would expect that Harold Smith has gone to Hockaday about as often as they figured they could get the ball to him realistically considering the coverage on it. I mean, you've got to take what the defense gives you. Tonight, unfortunately for New England, Los Angeles has not done much giving on defense. They played as well tonight defensively as I think we've seen them play all year. 2.28, and the clock's running. Second down and six. Hockaday, Gardner to the near side, and Gardner's in motion. Penalty marker down again. Smith going deep. He's got two men there. Gardner gets a touchdown, but there is a marker down. play the touchdown is going to stand and Brian Gardner comes up with a big catch watch now two New England receivers in the orange jerseys right down there Hockaday and Gardner and Gardner goes up between two LA defenders and makes the big catch for the touchdown forty nine thirty four and of course New England will try to go for the two points with the clock running 157. And remember that timeout that they used at the end of the third quarter that could loom larger. Alvin Williams, motion, and whistles are blowing everywhere. Forty-nine thirty-four. And a little confrontation in the end zone. Harold Smith and well, Gary Mullen chatting back in the end Sylvester zone. Sylvester Bembry is usually at the center of attention. <laughs> Illegal formation, defense, half the distance of the goal. Uh, Illegal formation against Los Angeles, so the penalty creeping up there on them. New England gets another one shot. Hey, Billy, one on the ball. Uh, the clock continues to run down. It won't stop until one the, the final ball. minute. Last time, as we saw the flags thrown, New England tried the option play again. Let's see if they want to come back to that. And it was intended for Williams, 88. And Smith couldn't find him with it. One of those plays in arena football you don't see all that often, trying to get the ball to either the fullback or the tight end slash offensive lineman quickly out of the flat before the quarterback gets drilled by a rushing defensive player. Harold Smith just couldn't connect up. So the uh, two-point conversion attempt is no good and with 1.15 left to go Ray Wilson and his Los Angeles Cobras have a 49-34 lead. Wilsey whose team has been very streaky this year. They lost their first three, won their next three, lost their last two and New England hanging on with the hope. They trail by 15, and in the final minute, the clock will stop on out of bounds and incomplete passes. New England with two timeouts left, but they got to get the ball back from Los Angeles. Nice turnover here. A gift of a pass interception would be nice for New England. Although, if they did intercept one, it would be uh, an unusual occurrence for the steamroller. Ruoff. They kick it off. Sends it deep and through the end zone. And so Los Angeles will bring it out to the five where they'll have it. First and ten. And I'd say the Cobra's sitting pretty good right now, Steve. I'd say they are as well. And again, a team that uh, their coach was telling us today might be a little tired after a cross-country journey. After playing the kind of season that they have... Uh, had to play and endure the things that they've had to and again players having to go both ways for the entire game difficult proposition for these athletes the one minute warning now has been announced and that's just to let everybody know that out of bounds and incomplete passes will stop the clock New England with two timeouts left Los Angeles with three Matt Stevens 
Siemens in there right now. The quick pass to Lockett. And Lockett's dragged down at the 15. Looks like it's going to be enough for the first down. Larry Friday in the orange jerseys. The steamrollers in on the play. Quite frankly, you'd expect to see, I would think, these defensive players for New England playing a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage. Get up there, try to pop these guys, and not to give Matt Stevens the opportunity to just throw those short passes, which is what Ray Wilsey is telling him. Hey, if they're going to give you that short pass, let's just take it, try to keep the ball inbounds, force them to use their timeouts, and we'll just run this clock out. And after that timeout, New England has but the one timeout remaining as... Los Angeles will even more so solidify themselves for that fourth and final playoff spot and look ahead and try to maybe move up on the ladder. As it works, folks, when it does come around to playoff time, the third week in July, it'll be the first place team against the fourth place team. And Wade Lockett uh, is going to be our Iron Man, our Little Caesars Iron Man, uh, player of the game offensively. Well, he did a great job. Four receptions, 91 yards, a touchdown, but he also had some big defensive plays early on in the game and I think it's really the defense that did it for Los Angeles tonight especially their secondary especially the play of Derek Donald Lockett also back there because Hockaday was really shut down this evening you know you got to like a guy like Lockett too who came back he gave up a touchdown catch he's given up a couple of pass uh, interference calls still he comes back forgets about those things and makes the plays on offense Weppy Powell right up the middle and they just want to run the clock out now. New England has one more timeout left, and they'll use it right now with 45 seconds left to go. Pretty good test for both these teams tonight. Again, the number one passing offense coming in against the number one defense in the Arena Football League, and it looks like the number one offense prevailed. And the number one quarterback in the league has shown his stuff and shown it well. I'll tell you what, the, the best thing about the whole deal is, is Wade Lockett is our Little Caesars Iron Man player of the game. The best deal for the L.A. Cobras is it makes that long plane ride back to uh, Los Angeles so much shorter. I know, Steve, having played in Seattle when you've had games on the East Coast and you lose one, well, I'll tell you what, those coaches, you know, the stare, it, like, starts going <laughs> through you uh, about, uh, you know, Pittsburgh, and then by the time you get to Kansas City, it's about midway through you, and you just want to run and hide when you get home. Boy, there's nothing worse than one of those long trips when you lose. Uh, even after a game as physical as this one's been, the ride home after a win is not going to be a piece of cake. Second and ten, Weppy Powell. And the New England Steamrollers are out of timeouts. And looks like they're not going to have to run another play. They'll just let the uh, clock wind down as Ray Wilsey brings his group back east and I tell you Babe Pirelli had his guys ready they came out played an outstanding first quarter and then the defense for Los Angeles took over the second quarter and that man there Matt Stevens really got it together his offensive people gave him enough time to throw the football and the one big scrambling touchdown where he got himself out of trouble and the Los Angeles Cobras will snap a two game losing streak with a 49-34 victory tonight in Providence We'll return to the Civic Center in Providence, Rhode Island with more right after this. Uh, yes, uh, I'd like two of those pizzas. Those pizzas? Uh, they'll be $17.99. $17.99? But it says $10.99. Not for those pizzas. How can that be? I think if you refer to the fine print. Fine print? It's not render vendor responsible. <laughs> May I help you? Uh, who are you? I'd like to introduce our corporate attorney. He's here on a regular basis. Oh, I'm not surprised. At Little Caesars, you always get two great pizzas for one low price. Pizza, pizza. Only at Little Caesars. Come on, everybody. When life's got a brand new dance, fun begins, he's gonna do it. There's nothing to it. The fun lights fly. We'll tell them dance right. When the music's hot, have a cold fun light. Do the fun lights fly. First McKenzie parties with only Bud Light. He knows everything else is just a light. You know what really burns me up? My feet. Athlete's foot kept flaring up. I get rid of it for a while, but it'd just flare up again. Finally, I went to the doctor. He told me to get Tenactin. 
It's what doctors and pharmacists recommend most. Tenactin even cures recurring athlete's foot. Use it regularly like they tell you, and it'll keep the fire from coming back. Fast Actin Tenactin puts athlete's foot out for good. Yogi, 40,000 cars a day. See the Jake team for oil lube and fluid service. Jake team? What league do they play in? Welcome to Chippy League. The days of the unreachables are over. Metro Media Paging announces the reachable system. Call 1-800-437-BEEP and join the reachables. A lot of momentum shifts in this game tonight. New England scored the first 14 points, dominated the first quarter, but then Los Angeles came back with 25 second quarter points. They scored the first touchdown of the second half. They never looked back, and they win at 49-34 and pretty much put a lock on that fourth playoff spot here in the Arena Football 1988. Behind the passing, of course, of Matt Stevens, but certainly some catches like this by Mr. Lockett, our Iron Man for this evening. And look at the pass. Floater just a bit when Wade Lockett has his eye on and he's going to make this catch for a touchdown. And that's one of the reasons, the other reason L.A. won tonight. Good offensive line play. They control the line of scrimmage.